All right, it's now 7 o'clock. Good evening. Planning Board. It is September 12, 2019. I'd like a motion to accept the agenda as written. Second? Aye. All in favor? Aye. All right, our first item on the agenda is the continued public hearing for the Senior Center, 327 First Parish Road, a major site plan administrative review, the scenic road, and stormwater review section 320050. First thing we're going to do this evening is the scenic road so that we don't forget about it. So, Karen. Uh, well, the applicant filed um, uh, the application to remove 70 linear feet of the existing stone wall on First Parish Road for access to the new senior center. Um, they indicated that the stones that were going to be um, used for, from the stone wall would be used at the base of the um, emergency generator um, construction. Questions from the board? No trees. Excuse me? There's no trees. There's no trees within the right of way of First Parish Road that they are removing. There's trees within the property, but that's not covered under the Scenic Road Act. Any comments? Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. Um, so why are we putting the stones around the emergency generator instead of those continuing the wall with the current project? Did you all hear that? No, no. no. Want, Steve wants to know why the 70 feet of wall that is being removed is just going to go in front of the emergency generator rather than filling in the opening of the original parking air, um, parking uh, driveway entrance. We can do that if you wish. The top of the generator base is at the front corner of the building and we just wanted to reuse the stone. Um, it's not a problem to fill in that gap if you want. I'd like to reuse the stone for something that the scenic road and, uh, was intended to protect, which is the stone walls, not the generating base. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? In the public? Right. Okay, I have a motion. Suggested motion. I move that the planning board vote to approve the removal of approximately 70 linear feet of stone wall in the right of way of First Parish Road for access to the new Citroen Senior Center in accordance with the plan by Environment Henry and Archetype Inc. dated 5 2019. No additional stone wall shall be disturbed unless approved by the town planner. The applicant will notify the town planner 48 hours before construction commences and when the access is fully completed. This approval is contingent upon all federal, state, and local permits being obtained. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Further discussion? Uh, we should condition it with the notion that the stones will be reused to complete the wall and the uh, current existing driveway opening is going to be discontinued for use. Is there a second as amended? Yes. All those in favor as amended? Aye. Aye. All right, now we move on to uh, the senior center itself. Do you all have something new or some changes to show us this evening? Uh, yes, we, we do have um, some updates uh, based on comments that we've we received since the last meeting. Uh, just to reintroduce, my name is Steve Kirby with Vertex. Linda Hayes from uh, BBC and CLA. Joel Bartman, Rachel Young from BHA. Barry McGrail from Coastal. And Amy Archer from uh, Air Corp. Um, since the last, last meeting, uh, we um, went and uh, took additional traffic data um, in, in conjunction with what the NES um, letter uh, requested. Uh, we also did the additional test bidding with the assistance of the W. Uh, 
Uh, we were in contact with uh, recreation, planning, water, sewer, fire, and, and police. Uh, we've had uh, several submissions of drawings and information uh, as, as recent as today. Um, we've, had, we've been receiving some comments as of recently as of today. Uh, the responses to the peer and department reviews, uh, we will get into details later, but at this point, uh, we see that the, the Merrill uh, peer review has been satisfied, uh, the NES has been satisfied, uh, water and sewer has been satisfied, uh, the fire department, uh, we've sent them all the information, I haven't gotten confirmation from Allen yet, um, police has also been satisfied, um, and the planning is to be determined. Uh, part of what we've done, we've, had, we've made some concessions to the original design based on the comments. Um, some of these concessions added additional work to the scope, uh, which includes paving of the a section of the rear parking lot uh, of, of the existing leeway. Uh, we will have to absorb those costs within the budget. We, we have a set budget. We're not building the budget at this point. Um, we may have to delete something within the design or or take it out of contingency. We don't necessarily like to do that out of, out of contingency, but we will have to work to, to absorb that, those costs um, from the budget. Uh, I did want to go through and touch base on some of the comments that came up during the uh, August 8th uh, hearing. Um, in regard to uh, connectivity uh, to other areas around the neighborhood, uh, in particular, the library and the Central Park Drive um, side of the uh, of uh, First Parish. That work was not part of the original charge for the or, or, or the current budget. Um, if if we do, are required to do something on the north side, it will again uh, incur cost for construction and design. And with the budget set, um, we will have to look at whether we uh, bespoke something or. Uh, take money out of the contingency. Uh, parking issues is going to come up later on in the presentation. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about the reuse of the D wing, uh, and as we had spoken uh, previously, uh, that was studied and rejected to use for as the senior center. And for the last meeting, you uh, uh, as a board had said there would be no further discussion on the use of the D wing in, in this format. Uh, I don't think we said that. We may have heard that, but we did not say that. Okay. All right. And I probably did refer to um, Excuse me. Can you talk up louder? We're having trouble hearing you. Yeah, we talk about it. Better? Yeah, my microphone. I do. also a statement at the, at the last uh, uh, hearing that the budget for the project uh, was split uh, between $8 million for the senior center and $4 million for the recreation center. That was, that was uh, incorrect. Um, just as a review of the budget, the senior center was $8.1 million, the rec center was $1.2 million, the veterans office was $0.2, the generate, whole building generator was $0.2, Demo abatement was 0.3, site work was 1.2 million, soft costs were a million. That, that's, that's the breakdown for the 12.2 million dollars. But it, um, saying that the rec center was 4 million, I, I did get some questions back from some people. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, there was the discussion about the, um, the location of the generator uh, being somewhat in, in the uh, Area as you first come into the building. Uh, that was located there because the electric room is, is located in that part of the building. You need to keep the generator close to the, um, uh, the electric room uh, just to shorten the, uh, the length of, of wiring. Uh, there was a question about the senior center blocking the elevation of the B wing. Uh, we are going to review that later on in the meeting. Uh, there was a question about the distance of the elevator being excessive at the recreation center. Uh, that elevator needs to be located at, in the lobby of the gym in order to, access, uh, to make the gym itself accessible. We are going to have entries at both the north and south side of the A-Wing, so they will be resistant. Um, 
both the Merrill and the Vanessa uh, letters will be gone over by folks from here. Uh, I guess at this point I will turn that over to Taria for uh, the civil review. Good evening, Taria McGrath, Coastal Engineering. Um, so I wanted to briefly bring you through um, the additional testing that we performed um, on the project site on August 20th. It was in response to um, comments from Merrill that um, it was necessary to perform additional soil testing in the exact location of the proposed stormwater management systems. Um, we certainly agree um, with this recommendation, and on August 20th, we went out uh, with the support of the town CPW and dug um, four additional test holes. Um, we went down about 10 feet, and we found that um, there was no groundwater present or evidence of seasonal high groundwater within four feet of the bottom of the proposed stormwater management systems. Um, at the time of testing, we also did infiltrometer testing to make sure that the soil um, infiltration rates were in line with our assumptions during design. Um, we did find that they were in line with our assumptions, and um, the infiltration rates found um, did not result in any changes to the layout, size, or design of the proposed stormwater management system. So again, just to go through um, what's proposed, we have three stormwater management systems shown on this plan in blue. Um, we tested in each of the locations of these systems. Um, and then on the east side of the site, um, we have an additional system, and there's a soil test hole done on that side. Uh, as a result of the soil testing, we have updated the stormwater calcs to reflect uh, the exact infiltration rates that were found during testing. Um, we submitted to you uh, this summary table that shows the reduction in um, peak flow and also volume in the two-year, 10-year, and the 100-year storm event. Um, this is in line with your stormwater management regulations. Um, we also submitted to you uh, revised plans um, D1 and also D2. These plans were updated in response to um, the soil testing and also to comments from Merrill um, related to the time concentration calculation. Um, so on D1, you can see our new soil results um, and also test hole locations. And similarly on D2, you can see the um, exact location of the additional soil testing in relation to the stormwater recharge basins. And then also it shows um, indicates on there the symbol of TDC, which is time concentration, and we provide that calculation. Again, um, these calculations didn't result in any changes to the actual design of the systems. Um, also in response to comments, we updated the erosion control plan to include um, stockpile areas on the plan and also um, construction period um, sedimentation basins. Uh, these are shown on the plan. Um, they're shown in the heavy dash um, black rectangles are going to be your stockpile areas. Um, and then you'll see um, some more rounded um, polygon type shapes. Those are our estimated areas of sedimentation basins. Um, the locations of each of these are based on um, estimates of the uh, construction phasing and also the general patterns of um, runoff conditions that occur today. We've also submitted um, the operations and maintenance manual as a standalone package um, so that it can be maintained on the project site um, after it's developed. Um, this Operations and Maintenance Manual goes through all the necessary steps to take care of the stormwater management systems. And also we've included um, an enhanced emergency um, spill cleanup plan that lists out clean, um, key personnel to contact if there's an event of a spill in one of the areas on the project site. And it also goes through some initial measures that um, personnel on the site can take while they're waiting for um, emergency response. Um, the purpose of that is to protect um, the stormwater management systems from introduction of um, oils and hydrocarbons, um, should there be um, some kind of a oil or some kind of spill in the parking areas. Um, and to further enhance the protection of the um, sensitive resource area, water resource area, 
The um, stormwater management systems are, I'll just remind you, they're designed to include um, oil grit separators and also uh, hooded deep, deep sub catch basins. The purpose of these two um, best management practices prior to um, subsurface uh, recharge basins is that, it, is that it gives us two opportunities to capture hydrocarbons and unsuitable materials um, in those structures prior to conveyance of any runoff to any kind of infiltration structures. Um, there are, included in the operation maintenance plan, there's procedures for um, personnel on site to clean these basins should there ever be um, any kind of event on the property. And then finally, uh, there is a question um, regarding the volume of cut fill on the site. Um, in general, the site is, the site grades really aren't going to change too much. Um, we did do a cut fill analysis and we found that um, the proposed project um, will result in about a 500 cubic yard fill on the site. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to Amy for comments. Thank you. So at the last meeting, we walked through the original study we had done from a traffic perspective, looking at access, circulation, and safety. Um, there were some requests from the peer reviewer that we add some additional data, and we have gone ahead and done that. So I just want to walk through quickly a reminder of what the circulation on the site is. Uh, there's a proposed full access driveway on First Parish Road. There's a proposed full access driveway for a new parking lot that would be off of the north end of Cudworth Road. And then we're going to maintain the other two driveways that currently exist along Cudworth Road, with the northern one being an entrance only driveway, and the southern one functioning at least in the area right near Cudworth as a two way driveway to allow access to and from the historic. Within the site, there will be some areas of two way. Coming in off of First Parish, there will be a one-way circulation around the primary parking lot for the center itself, and then two-way behind the building, which was recommended from the initial traffic study to allow people the flexibility to exit and enter to and from either First Parish or Clarkport. So taking a quick step back, um, <coughs> to position the site within the overall roadway network, Cudworth, which is on the east side of our site, continues down to Country Way, which then connects back towards First Parish Road, but that is about a three-quarter of a mile loop. And then on the right of the site, Cudworth ties into the scenic First Parish Road, which doubles back up to Beaver Dam, a much shorter circle. Because um, there was some talk at the last meeting about whether or not Cudworth Road would be um, should be considered as a one-way, and we just want to point out that that would cause some inconvenience to the residents currently on Cudworth Road. So the additional analysis that was requested was um, potential turning movement accounts, which are typically captured to do level of service analysis. As we had pointed out at the last meeting, the volumes <coughs> being generated by the senior center are going to be low compared to many other land uses. <coughs> Additionally, the general hours of programming will be between 9 and 4, which fall outside of the peak commuter periods on the adjacent roadways. Uh, so we have not done turning movement counts and level of service analysis. They're not uh, necessary for this level of volume that's going to be added. The second request was to do an ATR, which is an automatic traffic recorder count, to get a better sense of the speeds along First Parish Road, to get an increased number of data points there. Um, also to look at crash data along First Parish Road, and the ATR gives us uh, an average traffic daily volume, which can then be compared to other locations within the state for crash rates. Uh, so we did do the ATR on First Parish Road, on the Wednesday and Thursday following the last meeting, uh, August 14th to August 15th. And uh, the 85th percentile speed from that study was actually one mile per hour less than we had captured with our uh, more limited data set. Uh, an 85th percentile speed of 37 miles per hour traveling westbound along First Parish Road and 34 miles per hour traveling eastbound along First Parish Road. So that just slightly changed the amount of sight distance we needed from the driveway, but not significantly. 
Uh, and then the ATR also proved an average daily traffic volume of almost 7,500 vehicles along Hertz Parish Road over a 24 hour period. Uh, so the second additional request, or uh, the third actually, was to expand on the crash data review that we had done. We looked at a three year period previously. We expanded that to a five year period uh, at the intersection. So there were five incidents over the five year period looking at the daily volume. Uh, so a crash rate is the number of incidents per year compared to the per million entering vehicles. So you take 7,500 per day and multiply that out over the course of the year and figure out how many million entering vehicles you have at the intersection. The crash rate at the intersection of Cudworth, First Parish Road, and Beaver Dam Road is actually lower than the state average for the district and the state as a whole. Although the crash rate is relatively low, we do think there's a lot of confusion with the excess pavement that's there and the multiple movements that people need to make. So we have made some recommendations to the town if they want to further study <coughs> that intersection separate from this project, because it's not part of the scope for the senior center. Um, consideration could be given to reducing the number of approaches at the intersection. Uh, I'll remind you that one approach is being removed with the removal of the exit driveway that's coming currently out of the site. Um, but to reduce it even further would require converting one of the roads to a one-way, possibly. And what we think could be considered is taking the triangle around the common and making all three of those one-way in a counterclockwise motion, which would actually reduce um, the number of conflicts at not only the Converse, First Parish, and Beaver Dam intersection, but also First Parish with Branch and Branch back with Beaver Dam. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing that could be done is to potentially merge the scenic portion of First Parish Road and Cudworth before they approach First Parish Road and Beaver Dam. That would also reduce one of the approaches at the intersection, making it more of a T, uh, T intersection. It could be aligned that way. Uh, and the final thing that we think the town could consider is signalization. Um, that would require more counts over a 12-hour period. But as I mentioned, that is not part of the Situate Senior Center. It is just something that there are pre-existing conditions with actually all three of those intersections that I mentioned there that could be further analyzed um, to be relieved by the town. The final uh, thing that we had looked at was um, taking a look at the site distance, not only from the driveways, as we had done originally, um, at the proposed driveways, but also from the existing driveways and the intersection of Cudworth and Beaver Dam. So we went ahead and did that. Um, all of the site distances for stopping sites are met um, for the speeds anticipated each location, except, as we mentioned at the last meeting, the uh, driveway out on the first parish is just a little bit shy uh, and would meet a speed up to 35 miles per hour. Um, the posted speed is 30. However, as you approach from the east, the westbound movements along Beaver Dam and First Parish Road have no visibility of the speed limit as they approach that speed change. Uh, so we recommend that a speed limit sign be installed just west of the intersection. Um, just west of the Central Park Drive area before the next residential and church driveway. That would give visibility from both of those approaches. Uh, additionally, the speed limit sign that is farther west along First Parish today is undersized, really, for the type of road that this is. So we recommend that the new sign be a 24 by 30 inch sign, which would match the size of the speed limit signs along the other roadways in the area, including the Dam and the scenic portion of First Parish. Uh, and then upon initial installation, it would be beneficial to pair it with a solar power driver feedback sign. Um, so that will help reduce speeds along that portion of the roadway, which we think will then provide sufficient sight distance to that driver. And as we mentioned, there's always the flexibility in the site for anybody that has any additional hesitation with that driveway to come around the back of the building and enter and exit along Cutworth. Uh, so I believe that covers everything that we had, um, a little bit of expansion from our previous study in response to the Vanessa Peer Review. With that, I'll hand it off to Joel.
I'm going to be reviewing the, uh, the, the department uh, comments uh, that came in from water, sewer, fire, and the police. Um, <clears throat> the water department was, was concerned about uh, sizing of the domestic and the fire, uh, fire line, and also um, the uh, average daily usage for the water lines. Um, in conjunction with, with the fire department uh, requesting the hydrant on the site, uh, the, uh, the engineer determined that the fire service needed a four inch uh, line to, to serve the building, but because the fire hydrant is, is on a six inch branch, we're installing a six inch from the street into the building. Uh, the domestic line is, is a two inch copper line. Uh, we also submitted the average daily usage estimates from the engineer, um, which uh, essentially is about uh, uh, 1,200 gallons per day. Uh, we forwarded that to the, to the water department and they seem fine with that, with that information. Uh, the sewer department also, or sewer division rather, also uh, had some items that uh, that we went over. Uh, in particular, they, they had some concerns about the grease strap, which we are putting in a, in a two section grease strap and that's, that's on the, uh, the drawings. Um, they were looking for external cleanouts, uh, which we advised the drawings to show those. Uh, external cleanouts on the, uh, on the sewer line. Uh, there was concern about the uh, abandonment of the existing sewer line that had been capped. Uh, we also uh, including a note on uh, abandoning and capping those uh, sewer connections. Uh, they were requesting uh, watertight frames and covers for the uh, proposed sewer lines uh, and also the existing sewer manholes. Uh, we are uh, we have the watertight covers on the uh, exist on the, the proposed new sewer manholes, uh, but the existing manholes are outside of the, uh, the scope of the project. Um, there was also concern about uh, disrupting the existing lines uh, and making sure they don't get disconnected from from the, the buildings that are in use. Uh, which we will have uh, notes on the drawings to make sure that that does not happen. Uh, essentially, we got uh, feedback from the sewer division that they were acceptable, uh, accepting of those responses. Uh, the fire department uh, had several concerns. Um, one was, like I said, to make sure that there's a, a fire hydrant on the site uh, within uh, 100 feet of the fire department connection on, on the uh, front of the building. Uh, we located that fire fire hydrant approximately 60 feet from the fire department connection. Uh, we also had concern that the, uh, the reinforced grass um, drive that's in front of the B wing uh, be marked the signage so that uh, in one it's not used uh, unauthorized, but it also allows the uh, uh, the fire department to know exactly where to enter. We added that to the uh, to the drawings. And uh, uh, we also uh, evaluated the turning radius for ladder one uh, from the various drives within the site, and that, that also uh, was acceptable. Uh, the uh, police department was concerned about uh, paving width and parking orientation at the back of the existing building. Uh, the connector drove going from the senior center parking lot to the rear of the B-Wing is 24 feet in width. Uh, the requirement from the fire department is actually 20, a little greater there. Um, there's one section of the, uh, the parking area that's being repaved, and those uh, parking spaces right now are at a diagonal orientation. So we're widening that one section so that the uh, parking lot can be straight in parking since that's a two way. And uh, uh, there is no issues with, with, uh, with that from the, from the police department. John Bartman, uh, the FSA, I just want to talk uh, a little bit about responding to the traffic and uh, parking requirements on site. The, um, the last presentation we had shown what we thought was the requirement based on uh, Table 760.6 of the zoning bylaws, and then um, we pointed out that there wasn't any particular category that the senior center or the recreation department fit into within that category. And based on the final uh, 
item in uh, table 760.6 is parking spaces adequate to accommodate normal demand is determined by the planning board. So um, we tried to show what normal demand was for the different buildings. Uh, what this first method one is showing is going back to table 760 and breaking up the senior center into components that actually um, fit into the requirements. So instead of a single use, we have um, professional or other office use of the administrative space. We have the fitness component. We have assembly use for the assembly rooms. And we have educational use for certain other program rooms. So the senior center is divided into four uses, and we calculated the occupants and the parking um, and come up with a need for 91 parking spaces at the senior center and using that same logic we came up with 71 spaces at the recreation center that <coughs> we're not really changing anything of the status quo there. The spaces are provided, um, there are 70 spaces in this main parking lot. As Steve mentioned, we're repaving and creating some additional spaces here. There are 11, and the thought is that this would be, um, if the 70 spaces in this lot is inadequate, the staff would park here, leaving the patrons and clients of the senior center the more approximate lot. And then we have 16 shadow uh, spaces in which we're showing how they could be fit in. We're asking that those be considered shadow spot spots on behalf of the town who have asked us to minimize the encroachment into this area if at all possible because that uh, it's not within the outfield line of the, of the softball field but it's taking more green space and it's right on the edge of the outfield line. So uh, the theory on shadow parking is you can show it, you can show that the site complies and it's needed it's proved that it's needed after a year or two of use. The parking can be put in if it's proven that it's not needed. We're able to preserve the green space, have less impervious surface on the site, et cetera. Um, the senior center um, exits out here as a, a secondary egress on the Cudworth. Um, the recreation department now has a new lot here on the north side of their building, and then the uh, summer camp drop-off happens in this loop around the tennis courts, if you can see where the curse is going. So right now they go through a loop at the front, um, and in the future we go through a loop in the back, and we have an equal amount of staging and parking spaces there that's on the front. Um, Rachel? So I'm just going to touch upon some comments from that we've received from the planning board via email that we may not have discussed in detail at the last presentation. Um, I'm just going to go through them quickly. So planting was one issue that was raised, and we just wanted to stress that we are complying with the bylaws and the number of trees and the caliper size and their proximity to the proposed parking. So this diagram simply shows in green, the new trees that are two and a half caliper or larger that are within 10 feet of the proposed parking. One question that arose was why we didn't put any planting on the islands in the new parking lot for the senior center, and that is because it would conflict with the proposed lighting that we're putting there. Um, another question that was brought up was connectivity and accessibility. So this diagram is just meant to highlight or explain how pedestrian and bicycle <coughs> connectivity occurs on site. So the main circular, I'm sorry, the main pedestrian uh, circulation is indicated in a thick red dashed line and it primarily goes west to east, east to west, with secondary traffic leading to the Cudworth estate and back to the track at the rear. The um, purple circles indicate the two bike racks that we're proposing on site. We have one at the senior center and we have a second at the recreation center entrance. And then in terms of accessibility, the blue is highlighting either accessible parking on the site or accessible entrances. And so new to the proposed design is an accessible ramp 
and door at the rear of the recreation center, so both sides of the recreation center are fully accessible. And there is already an accessible spot at the rear parking lot, but we're proposing providing a second one that is close to that ramp to address concerns from the planning board at the last meeting. Um, another issue that was brought up was the building overlap, the proposed building versus the existing. So these are just several diagrams um, to illustrate what the existing conditions are and what the proposed conditions are. So the first elevation is what the existing conditions are. So you have the B wing, you have the C wing, which is the lower A-frame building, and then you have the abutters all the way over to the right. The second diagram shows how the proposed senior center overlaps with the existing gate school. And so you can see that there's a 40-foot overlap um, I would like to point out, I don't have a photo of this, but I, um, I was very interested to find out, um, I was just doing some research, research this week, um, that prior to the C Wing, I didn't realize this, and probably everyone else in the situation does, but prior to the C Wing, there was actually a two story wood clapboard building on the site in the approximate location that we're proposing. So I just thought that was a little serendipitous. Um, and the, the last image just shows that when you're, you're furthest back, uh, closest to the C wing at the administrative area of the, the um, senior center, that that 40 foot overlap decreases to 10 feet, and that's really just the porch. It's not in the interior of the building, and that was intentional. Um, the location of the senior center, the face of the senior center at the admin wing, is intended to align with the face of the um, the B. Um, and I know this was touched on earlier about the emergency generator location. We realize that there's no perfect place for a generator on this site. Um, we realize the importance of having a generator on this site, the amenity that it provides for the town, but given all the constraints of the site, there's just no ideal place for it. We wouldn't want to place it to the extreme west because that would be an inconvenience and a hardship for the abutters. We wouldn't want to place it at the rear because that would be a financial hardship for the town in terms of the um, connections required to bring it all the way to the front of the building where the electrical room is. Um, so for us, looking at all of those constraints, the best location was to put it at the front in close proximity to the electrical room. And we're proposing enclosing it with a high quality enclosure, a wood fence, and stone wall as we mentioned earlier in the presentation. Um, and then lastly, parking lot lighting. I don't believe this was a specific comment from the board, but I just wanted to touch upon it briefly because I think there were some questions from the general audience. So this diagram just highlights the, the on-site park, uh, on parking lighting. So the red circles indicate either a sconce, I'll go to the next slide, either a sconce that's on the side of the building or one of the taller site lights. So in the center of the parking area, those are the site lights. Adjacent to the building, those are the sconces. And then just box in are where we have lighted bollards, which you see here on this image. And I believe that concludes our formal presentation. You want to add? Thank you. Um, one thing I did want to add, and, and uh, add actually some comments and, and some questions. I did receive a draft of the decision, and I noticed there was a couple of items on the draft that we hadn't, hadn't been notified about. One of them in, in relation to the, the generator, there was a uh, request to have the acoustical paneling on, on, the, uh, on the outside generator uh, rated for 65 dBA at three feet from the generator. I did not have time to, to look into that. I, I know that 65 dBA is, is not an issue. It's that distance from the generator. I think we have to really look at that to see what the generator manufacturers provide. Um, the acoustical engineer is a Sentec engineer. Um, they've given us two data points. The, the noise ordinance for uh, the statewide is um, mass DEP requirements, and it's a regulation that sound from building mechanical equipment, i.e., the generator, not exceed existing background sound levels by 10 dBA in decibels, and that will comply. The generator enclosure is designed to provide uh, no more than 65 dBA at seven meters surrounding the generator. Okay. Uh, one other item was that there was a, a line to put bollards at the existing entry. 
to uh, eliminate the cars from driving it, even though we were landscaping and putting curb in there. I think that's no longer necessary if we're going to rebuild the, um, uh, the salvage wall in that space. Um, there was also a, a note to ensure that the parking uh, light posts go off at night and that they be on occupancy sensors. So when someone drives into the parking lot, they come in at a low power. I think we need to research that a little bit more. Um, I think our, our original intention was that they be on a timer because obviously it gets dark at different times. Um, and you may not want them on all night long if it's, if it's just on a, an occupancy ride and it's gonna be on all night. So that's something we're gonna have to look into a little bit more. Um, the last thing is I actually have a question for the board. There was there was a, a note saying that any kind of building signage needs needs to be reviewed. We're not intending on putting a ground mounted sign at the front lawn, but we did have lettering on the side of the building. Is that is that the same thing? It needs approval. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you on set? That's all I have. Yes. Okay, I'm going to take this opportunity now to open this up to the public, because this is a public hearing. Unless you have something new, we're not going to plow the ground that we've plowed before. So if anybody has, we have received your comments, we understand where so many of you are coming from, your concerns, and so on. So if you have something new, raise your hand, identify yourself. Yes, sir. James Hunt, Panama Road. Is the generator enclosure somehow exempt from front setback requirements? Unfortunately, it seems to be the only place that it can go. Mr. Goudreau, yeah. would you care to enlighten us on the generator and the fact that it does not meet the setbacks? Uh, I'm not aware of the setback is there, but that is the only place it can go without having to redesign the entire electrical system for the building, which is substantially after the cost of the building. So it goes closest to where the electricity from the off the pole and the building. Uh, as far as I know, unless things have changed a lot, the planning board cannot issue a variance for the front setback that is referred to the zoning board of the field. Then we have to go to the zoning board, yes, for that. Okay. All right. Then it's yes. not a permanent structure. Excuse me? The generator is not permanent structure. It's not fixed to the building. It's portable. It's a movable generator. It's not portable, but it's not a fixed. It sits on a pad. It's a piece of equipment. It's not part of the building. All right, we'll have to take that on your advice. <coughs> Mr. Litchfield. Steve Litchfield, 2 of our country way. Um, I'm on the board at the Historical Society. We manage the government house and the barn. I notice there's a walkway up to the, the barn part, but the house is really it belongs to the town. We need some kind of access there. I didn't know if there's other access is just stepping stones that you're not showing or what. I, don't know. I know you have like a paved area from the um, parking lot that was uh, for recreation that we, we discussed when we were dealing with the existing well. So I was just wondering if you know what might be going there because uh, it's not showing. You just have the one with the car and it's showing on the, 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 park, the uh, parking lot there. What we were requested to show or provide was a, a, a path and a driveway to bring carriages in and out of this, uh, the barn. Right. And then the other paving there is what's there and it remains. We're not changing this, this. The, 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 the question we came up with was since the driveway, which is fairly close to the house, you know, goes away, it's quite a ways from the house, but with any one of those pathways. Right. So we were just wondering if there was any thought given to just make it easier for people to walk up to the front door or whatever. Um, we have met with the historical commission and reviewed this plan, and, and they were quite happy with it. So I, I, that's why we pursued this. Okay. 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 Okay.
the rocks when they are removed for the two-way driveway and putting them over where the old driveway was, is that going to restrict the mobility for the fire department to get in and out in no. case of an emergency? No, not at all. They're going to use the parking lot. And there's also going to be underneath, uh, in front of the B-Wing, it's very similar to what they did at the junior high that enables the fire equipment to go across that lawn. It will be marked and give them access. But the only way they'd be able to get in now is through that parking lot and, the, and then if they were driving on the hardened lawn packed area, there's no way for them to get out on the other side without backing up. Is that correct? I'd say that this plan has been reviewed with the fire chief. There is an extension from the parking lot, the north parking lot, into the center of the site, and this site complies with what the fire department wants for access. It does comply. But this particular review that they did still had an opening through that to get out onto First Parish if they no. had to in an emergency. No, 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 it never did. Okay. Nope. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, MA Green 337 Birch Parish Road. There was a mention of a building coming then in the uh, spot where the ceiling was mentioned. There's never been a building there. Because um, I've lived on that property forever. And uh, there was just the parking lot in front of the building um, that it was before they built the space. So just to correct that statement. Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Curious before she now is driving. Could you give us a status of where the planning board is as far as approval? So, um, on the project. All right. This is what's going to happen. If there are no further questions or comments that are new. All right. I'm going to ask Karen if she has anything new. If not, what we're going to do next is to go through the suggested motion and through the um, conditions, some of which may be changed and so on. And then I will take a second for discussion. And then the planning board members will chime in on how they feel about all of this. And we will take a vote tonight. Yes, Mr. Hunt. Uh, your conditions address VAI's uh, suggestion recommendation that conditions be placed on the uh, proposed permit to accommodate the coordination of parking among the various yes. users on the it site. it does. That yeah. will be Yes, in the it does. Okay. Karen, do you have anything further that you want I to add? I have nothing further to add. We have gone, we have taken, we've gone through all the comments, all the, the Vanessa report, and the, uh, the Merrill report, and we have, um, we have incorporated those into the uh, findings of fact and conditions because the board has to make findings of fact for the project. Everything that we've received is in, I think, in the uh, draft decision for the board to consider. Thank you. Um, Mr. Pedro, do you have anything that you would like to add as basically in charge of all of this? No, I want to thank the planning board for the diligence. I know this is a lot of work. Uh, I reviewed your uh, proposed recommendations. Um, there's a couple of areas where you uh, decided whether to recommend or to say shall the board of selectmen do something, uh, given the fact that the board of selectmen is a separate elected board. Kicking the area of cut work, making that a one way when we haven't had any discussions with the residents down the other end, uh, that should be a recommend to look into making that a one way as opposed to a direction. Thank you. All right. Um, you don't want to be I'm afraid you're going to have to listen to me. Okay. Open the hearing. As Mr. Vignani is smiling up at the back of the room. I move to make the following findings of fact regarding the senior center at 327 First Parish Road. One, the applicant commit, submitted on May 23rd, 2019, and duly filed with the town clerk on June 4th. 2019, an architectural and site plan package entitled 
Situate Senior Center, 327 First Parish Road, Situate Mass, 02066 by Bradman, Henry, and Archetype, Inc. Appropriate professionals stamped the drawings. Two, a special town meeting on May 13th, 2019, voted to appropriate the sum of $12,232,450 to demolish Section C of the Old Gate School, design, construct, and furnish a new senior center on the property of the Old Gates School, and design, renovate, and furnish the Veterans Memorial Gym. A vote was taken on May 18, 2019, at the annual town election on May 18, 2019, for debt exclusion override for the senior center which passed by a vote of 1896 to 1726. A recount of question one, debt exclusion of May 18, 2019, annual town election vote was held on June 20, 2019, where the results were reaffirmed. The town supported the funding of the project as evidenced in the votes above. Three, the site consists of a total of 11.49 acres and is located at the intersection of First Parish Road and Cudworth Road. The site is located in the residence R2 zoning district, and the westerly portion of the site is in the Water Resource Protection District. The property <coughs> currently is occupied by the former Lester Gates Middle School. The Veterans Memorial Gym and a portion of the former school building are occupied by the Situate Recreation <coughs> Department. The Cudworth House and Barn are located in the northeast corner of the site. <clears throat> Tennis courts, a track with grass area, ball field, and the Citrus Historical Society Little Red Schoolhouse are located behind the existing school at the south of the site. According to the applicant, 90 parking spaces exist <coughs> on the site now. Four, according to the elevations and the site plan, the height of the proposed senior center will be 35 feet at the tallest roof and the brick portion of the building calculated to the midpoint of the slope. This is at the maximum limit of the bylaw requirement of 35 feet and meets the height requirements for a residential district and also meets the required front, side, and rear setbacks for the residential district. Five. Section 770.6, a site plan approval standard A, protection of adjoining premises against detrimental and offensive, offensive methods of utilization of the site. Finding, the property off of First Parish Road has single family residences to the west of the site. A church with a preschool and residence directly to the north the town common and a playing field to the east and residences beyond the property to the south. Central Park field and housing, the Lawson Tower and the Citroen Town Library are further off behind the church. The proposed senior center building will be located to the northeast corner of the property where the old sea wing of the Gates School stood. The entry drive comes in to the site from the First Parish Road along with a walk and evergreen and a city <coughs> screening and a privacy fence on the site providing a screen adjacent to the residences to the west. The applicant opines the proposed site is compatible with other uses in the area. The board opines that the adjoining premises will be protected as conditioned against any detrimental or offensive uses of the site and the site plan meets with the standards of the zoning, Situate Zoning Bylaw Section 770.6, Paragraph A. Six, Section 770.6.B, Site Plan Approval, Standard B. Traffic, safety, and ease of access at street and highway entrances and exits of driveways taking account of traffic volume, grades, site distances, and distances between such driveway entrances, exits, and the nearest existing street or highway intersections and times of peak traffic flow. Finding, the applicant engaged Parry Corporation, Parry, to um, prepare a traffic assessment 
the Mesitua Senior Center, the board, through its engineering peer review consultant, Merrill Engineers, and land surveyors, engaged Vaness and Associates, Inc., to evaluate the adequacy and accuracy of Paris methodology, data, findings, and conclusion. BAI submitted detailed written comments to the planning board. In response to these comments, the applicant and Parry provided responses. BAI indicated that the additional materials were needed in support of the project. The applicant and Parry collected additional data and prepared revised reports where requested and updated the site plans. After further review by BAI, the applicant has determined to have adequately addressed BAI's comments and recommendations with board's conditions. The board determines that the proposed project, as conditioned, provides for traffic safety and ease of access <coughs> at the street and access driveways and times of peak flow traffic, concurs with the identity, their identified sight line limitations and recommendations offered by the applicant and the town's consulting engineer and will not create any undue congestion in the streets <coughs> and the ways abutting the proposed project or in intersections within relevant proximity to the proposed project. Seven, section 770.6.B, site plan approval standard C. Safety and adequacy of driveway layout, pedestrian safety, off-street parking and loading sites, minimizing glare from headlights and light intrusion, Sufficiency of access to service vehicles such as electricity, gas, fuel, telephone, laundry, rubbish removal, water, sewer, fire, police, ambulance, or other routine or emergency vehicles. Finding the number of parking spaces for a senior center is not specifically called out in the table of minimum requirements under section 760.6 of the zone bylaw. Thus, it would fall under all other uses. And the number of parking spaces should be determined by the planning board to accommodate normal demand. The bylaw minimum parking requirements requires one parking space for every three occupants as determined by the state building code for places of public assembly. It requires one space per 300 square feet for professional or other office and one space per 200 square feet for educational exempt uses. The applicant indicates that there is 6,100 square feet for assembly with 221 occupant, occupants requiring 74 spaces by the bylaw. The applicant indicates there is 2,065 square feet of professional office requiring seven spaces, 2,090 square feet of educational space requiring 10 spaces per the bylaw for a total of 91. Only 70 have been provided for the senior center. The applicant suggests the, that peak occupancy for a special event would be 170 patrons with full pro programming for other events not overlapping. Referencing the table in section 760, one space per three occupants would be required. This would amount to 57 required spaces. The applicant's traffic engineer suggests that parking be, be between one space per 200 square feet of gross floor area and one space per 105 square feet of gross area, amounting to 78 to 105 spaces. The applicant has indicated that with the ability to have shared parking on site and proximity to other compatible uses, that 70 spaces are provided based on the recommendations of their project traffic engineer. The applicant stated that they have not done any long-term planning for the integrated use of the site and, in particular, the simultaneous future use of Building B Wing, the Senior Center and Recreation Department, and therefore have not anticipated or included any parking for the use of Building B. The applicant stated that any future usage of Building B will necessitate the use of either the tennis courts and or the athletic field for additional parking. The Planning Board finds that the proposed parking of 70 spaces plus future expansion parking, and the board will figure out whether we want to say can or cannot be supported by the zoning bylaw. It appears to be, again, either sufficient or insufficient for the proposed use. 
All right, I'm going to open this up to the board at this moment. How do you feel? Steve? Um, I feel like we're, we, we pushed the limit on parking here and that any additional use of parking is going to create additional demands here. I think one of the things that we have to do is condition this this uh, approval, if you will, um, that there won't be any other use of the building be with, and that if, you know, that there's some kind of evaluation of the parking going forward, and that if they need to increase parking, they're gonna have to increase parking. Uh, you know, and we just have to limit what actually gets done here, what, what kind of use is actually done here. Because I, I also note that because there are 90 existing parking spaces already, they're only going up to 148 parking spaces, so that's really only an increase of 58 spaces on the site. So do you want this to read, people? 70 spaces plus future expansion, parking can or cannot be. Take your pick. Pick one. I'll pick one. I think the answer is can. I agonize over it. Yeah, I've agonized over it. Too. I've got more little matrices. I can I can tell you. All right. I can park so many cars in that spot you've never seen them before. <laughs> but the reality is, you see, I think in my own mind, the number is greater than 70. And I think that's by adding the ex expandable areas after demonstrating that we need them. Right? And then, Go from there, I think we have to say can. Right. And then, by the same token, it would be sufficient in the next mile. As conditioned. Everything as conditioned. As conditioned. Right. All right. The applicant indicates that indicates there are 90 parking spaces on site, and there will be 148 total parking spaces after the 70 spaces for the senior center are built. The existing condition, the applicant indicated, there were 30, 37 spaces in the North parking lot for recreation. This has been diminished to 23 spaces in the redesigned and relocation, relocated North parking lot. There is reduction in parking of 12 by 12 spaces that were existing for the recreation center and Veterans Memorial Gym. The privacy fencing to the west of the site minimizes the light glare to the extent possible. The fire department has determined that width and road composition of the fire department access roads, which consist of roadways, parking lot, and fire lanes are acceptable. The planning board opines that the site plan meets the standard of review of the Citrus Zoning Bylaw 770.6C for safety of driveway layout, number of parking spaces, access for service, and minimizing pen light glare. Again, as conditioned. As conditioned. Okay. Eight. Section 770.6D, site plan approval standard D. Adequacy of the methods of disposal for sewage refuse and other waste resulting from the uses permitted on the site, safety and adequacy of water supply and distribution and of firefighting facilities on site. Finding, the DPW Sewer Division has commented on the project and the responses from the applicant are adequate to address sewer disposal. A dumpster area is provided to the rear of the proposed parking area. The plans have also been reviewed by the DPW Water Division and their comments have been addressed. The fire department has been assured that there is a hydrant located in front of the building that will be within 100 feet of the fire department connection for the sprinkler and a fire pump has been included in the plans. The planning board opines that the site plan meets the standard of review of Citrus Zoning Bylaw 770.6D for adequacy of methods of waste disposal, adequacy of water supply and firefighting facilities on site. Nine, section 770.6.E, site plan approval, standard E, adequacy of surface and stormwater drainage and snowmelt runoff 
within and from the site, including but not limited to all walkways, driveways, buildings, parking, and loading areas. Finding number 10. The site plan and stormwater report were reviewed by the board's consulting engineer, Peter G. Palmieri, PE of Merrill Engineers and Land Surveyors. The plans are modified in response to the comments. It is anticipated there will be no increase in rate or volume of runoff of the proposed site and water quality standards. Water Resource Protection District requirements will be met with recharge of precipitation to the groundwater as stormwater management is met and water quality will be improved by reducing total suspended solids, TSS, by at least 90% as required by the zoning bylaw. Standards for the DEP stormwater management handbook have been met. The first snow storage area is to the south of the proposed parking lot where an extension of the future lot is proposed. A second snow storage area is shown to the north of the parking lot, north of the gym. This snow storage is above the underground drainage infiltration system. The proposed drainage system includes deep sump catch basins and proprietary, proprietary oil slash grit separators. These BMPs will provide pre-treatment of runoff and capture of oils and sediments. The review of the stormwater management system by the planning board's consulting engineer and their approval of the site plan eliminates the requirement for a separate stormwater permit under the stormwater general bylaw and its regulations for any work that conforms to the plan. The application in indicates that the drainage system can be expected to result in post-development runoff characteristics including peak flow, total volume runoff, and water quality runoff to be equal or less than pre-development conditions. The site plan meets the standard of situate zoning bylaw 770.6E for adequacy of stormwater management in the Water Resource Protection District. 11. Section 770.6F Site Plan Approval Standard F. If the site is located with the Water Resource Protection District, the adequacy of provisions made to protect against toxic or hazard materials or oil discharged. This does go on. <laughs> Um, loss resulting from corrosion, accidental damage, spillage of vandalism through measures such as spill control provisions in the vicinity of the chemical or fuel delivery points, secured storage areas for toxic or hazardous materials or oil, and indoor storage provisions for cor corrodible or dissolvable materials. Finally, the western portion of the site is in the Water Resource Protection District. The proposed stormwater management system include Hooded deep sump catch basins and oil and grit separators place prior to any conveyance of stormwater runoff from paved areas to the proposed stormwater recharge basin. There is an emergency spill cleanup plan that is updated for the site and will be attached to this decision that the applicant will be responsible for ensuring that the operation of the system will comply with the plan. The site plan meets the standard of situate zoning bylaw section 770.6F for adequacy and control of toxic hazardous materials in the Water Resource Protection District. 12. Section 770.6.G Site Plan Approval Standard G. Minimizing the volume of cut and fill, the number of trees of 6 inch caliber or greater removed, the length of stone walls removed, soil erosion, and destruction of other natural features. Find it. The proposed grading on the site is similar to the existing topography. Cut and fill has been minimized to the extent possible. Approximately five existing trees in the front of the existing gate school are proposed to be removed for the project. A majority of the existing trees in front of the gates will remain and will be protected during construction. Plus or minus 70 linear feet of stone wall along the frontage of the property on First Parish Road will re be removed from the scene of the driveway. <coughs> this stone wall removal was approved by the planning board after a scenic road hearing. The stones from the stone wall will be reused for the wall around the generator, as well as for closing off the front, the existing driveway. An erosion and sedimentation control plan will be used and an EPA NPDES construction general permit and associated stormwater 
pollution prevention plan will also be required. The site plan meets the standard of situate zoning bylaw 77.6G. 7, 7, 7 13. Section 770.6H, site plan approval standard H, minimize obstruction of scenic views from publicly accessible locations. Find site plan meets the standard situate zoning bylaw section 770.6H, a scenic views from the property to First Parish Unitarian Universal Church, Lawson Tower, Cudworth House and Barn, and the Town Farmer are preserved. 14, section 770.61, site plan approval, standard I. Parking areas shall be adequately buffered and shaded using native vegetation. Parking lots with, bid, with 10 or more spaces shall be planted with at least one shade tree per 10 spaces of a caliber of at least two and a half inches DBH with each tree providing shade to the parking area. Parking areas and visually degrading Elements such as dumpsters and loading docks shall be designed to minimize visual intrusion from public ways and residentially owned or zoned areas. In addition, suitable screening of such areas by wood fences and dense native evergreen hedges of five feet or more at time of planting shall be utilized. The use of chain link fences shall be avoided except in industrial areas. Outdoor lighting, including lighting on the exterior of the building or lighting in parking areas, shall be arranged to minimize glare and light spillover to neighboring properties. No outdoor <coughs> light shall be located more than 20 feet above the ground. Finally, the parking area to the west will be buffered with a mixture of evergreen and deciduous trees with some native varieties. A proposed six inch hollow PVC what? Six foot <coughs> hollow PVC vinyl privacy fence is also located by the west property line. There is an existing chain link fence that will be maintained on the southwest property line with a new privacy fence ends. The parking area to the north is not buffered. The parking area to the north is proposed to be planted with one shade tree for 10 spaces with 10 feet of the proposed, uh, within 10 feet of the proposed parking. The parking area for the senior center is proposed to be planted with one shade tree per 10 spaces. The dumpster is located to the rear of the parking area for the senior center with <coughs> fencing at the outside edge of the pavement. It is buffered from residentially owned or are zoned areas. Outdoor lighting is proposed that will be LED down lighting that will be installed 20 feet above the ground and there will be baller lights as well. The requirements of bylaw section 776I <coughs> have, have substantially been met. 15, section 770.6J, site plan approval standard J. Safe, functional, and convenient pedestrian, bicycle, and where practical transit access and continuity of pedestrian and bicycle network within the property <coughs> and to nearby pedestrian and bicycle facilities and trip generators. Finding. The board finds that there is safe, functional, and convenient on-site walkways for the proposed senior <coughs> center and drop-off pickup spot for the Gatra bus service. There are two bicycle racks provided, one by the recreation center entrance and one by the senior entrances. The proposed project connects to a public <coughs> sidewalk west of the project. The limit of work does not provide for any off-site pedestrian access to the proposed project. No new con connections are proposed to the north and east as there are existing sidewalks and crosswalks located along First Parish Road and Beaver Dam Road at the intersection with Cudworth Road. The requirements of the bylaw have been have that. The site plan entitled Situate Senior Center 327 First Parish Road, Situate Mass by Bergman Hungary and Archetype Inc. dated May 2019 with revisions through August 31st, 2019 meets the requirements of the Town of Citrus Zone Bylaw, Section 770.6. Site plan review standards are reviewed to a degree consistent with the reasonable use of the site for the proposed permitted 
by regulations of the district in which the land is located. Is there a second on the findings of fact? Second. Any discussion on the findings of fact? Uh, a few. Um, starting with item one, it just says the applicant, I think it should say the town is situate, parent, the applicant. I said, let's just wait till we get to the conditions. Okay, okay. All right. Okay. 
Okay. And do you have the next one? Just put yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I don't really have any comments on findings. I have a statement that I would like to say. I guess this would be the time to say it. Um, which is basically that I feel that this board has been really put between a rock and a hard place. Um, the planning board is, is charged with planning, and part of that includes facilities and services used by the public. The fact that this board did not see the plan until an informal discussion prior to applying for site plan and review submittal is troubling. Um, this board should have been involved much earlier on during the conceptualization phase of the project. For instance, one example here tonight is that the electrical system has already been designed, so we can't move the generator. In a conceptual, during the conceptual phase, we could have said, hey, generator shouldn't go in front of the building. Boom, redesign the electrical, or you, then you design the electrical plant to, to suit that. That's just one example. Um, do I think that this is the highest and best use of this site? Absolutely not in its current iteration. And I also think that this plan really backs the town into a corner in terms of how the B-Wing can potentially be reused in the future um, in terms of both the building itself and its use, but also in terms of parking, traffic, et cetera. Um, do I think that this current plan meets the standards of site plan review, which we just went over? In, I thought long and hard about this, like I know we all have. In my, I, I would say that it barely does. I would say that it does but just barely, and it doesn't sit well with me, and I'm probably not going to sleep well for the next few days um, after tonight. Um, do I think we could have done much better as a town? Most certainly, and finally, just that this whole process is, as a planning board member who donates a lot of time trying to do planning in this town, I am uh, very disheartened with how this went, and I'm going to leave here disappointed no matter what the outcome. Thanks. I have to say I agree wholeheartedly with what you just said. All right, is there any other comment on findings of fact? Just enough to be, go ahead. The only question I have is in your OM manual, you say we've got to store salt and sand in garages. Where are those garages? There's no place here that says that that's there. What's the question? Yeah. Could you repeat the question, please? You're all in the So the question is where would um, snow and salts be stored? Um, it's our understanding that the parking areas will be maintained by the DPW, um, and those materials will be coming um, when they do their processes during the winter when they spread um, sand and salt from the truck. So it'll be coming from their yard. Bill? Just an observation, pick up what Ben said. I think the seniors deserve a center. I'm not sure this is the center they deserve. And I also kind of take exception that this thing has been expanded to come back up and include everything else that's going on to the campus. But there's a need for a plan to do all of those things. Well, that plan should have been done preceding this one. And I'm not sure that how we're going to get back. In other words, there's talk about putting a food pantry in, in, into the, the gates the way it is right now. You can't do it because you don't have parking for it. You chew the whole of your parking for basically put it into the senior center. Instead of building it out where you can get, I think, shared parking, better use parking, that kind of goes by the way board because it's done. The decision's already been made on the center. But I think Ben's right. I think this, at least I'm going to lose some more sleep over this. Because I've really had to compromise and sit there in my mind to say, would I do it if this was somebody else other than the town and something other than our senior center? Or correction, my, I guess I've reached that point. Senior center. Yeah. Okay. Don't move, buddy. All right, thank you. I, I would echo those comments here. And I think it's the primary reason that in Section 7 we wanted to be clear that we stated that the applicant has not done any long-term planning for this site. And I think Bill is absolutely right that we boxed ourselves in on this site. Uh, and you know, we are, I think, at that minimal level of saying, does it meet the standard for site plan review? But you know, I think as all of us have said up here, that you know, an integrated campus plan would have been the way to start with this thing, not to come back and try to retrofit it later. But it is now 
you know, in this condition, you'll be boxed in, will be boxed in. And, um, and that's not to say, as Bill mentioned, that I don't believe that, it's, that, the, that we should have a senior center in town. I, I most definitely do. I just think we're, we've gone about this um, in sort of a, a backwards way in, in terms of laying this out. I could not agree more. And I do feel, as Ben has said, as everyone has said up here, that we are between a rock and a hard place. We're damned if we do, and we're damned if we don't. Yes, we need a senior center. These plans have been reiterated more times than I care to think about. Meetings were held, but they were never held with the planning board until after the vote was made at town meeting. The cat's been run out. You know, I mean, here we are. And if we, you'll have to wait to see how we all vote at the end. To say that I am disappointed in this project would be a colossal understatement. My job as an elected member of the planning board is to do what is in the best interest of the entire town of Situate. And I believe in planning. And as far as I'm concerned, this is not planning. So this, um, we have we have a second as condition for the findings of that. As amended. As amended. All those in favor? Did you get a second? Yes. Second. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Now we we'll move on to. Should we, should we vote? All right. Vote for the findings of that, Bill. Yes. Yes. I just didn't give you ask for a vote. Yeah, well, so I. I are. <laughs> I move to approve the site plan. So that, that was five. It was unanimous. Okay. I move to approve the site plan for the Situate Senior Center at 327 First Parish Road, subject to the following conditions. One, the site plan entitled Situate Senior Center 327 First Parish Road, Situate Mass 02066 by Bargman, Henry, and Archtype Inc., Citrate Mass, dated 20, May 20th, 2019, with revisions through August 31st, 2019, is approved, except that it may be modified if changes are necessary to meet the conditions below. Two, six reduced sets of 11 by 17 prints of the most current plans and PDFs shall be provided to the planning board prior to the pre-construction conference for distribution to town departments and for the files. Three, the building shall meet all pertinent requirements of the Massachusetts State Building Code. Four, materials and details of construction shall meet all pertinent requirements of the DPW, Board of Health, Fire Department, Conservation Commission, Building Department, and Commission on Disabilities. Where this site plan administrative review requires approval, permitting or licensing from any local, state, or federal agency, such required approval, permitting or licensing, is deemed a condition of the Town of Situate Planning Board's approval of this site plan. All necessary permits and approvals must be received prior to construction. Five, see separate certification of access action for scenic road approval. Six, no new underground irrigation system shall be allowed to connect to the town's water distribution system or in any manner use municipal water in accordance with the policy made effective by the Board of Selectmen on October 8, 2014 and reaffirmed by the Situate Water Commissioners on May 26, 2015. All irrigation systems installed in accordance with the policy must be supplied by on-site sources of private water suppliers at the expense of the property owners, which is the town situated. Utilities, parking, traffic, and erosion control. Seven, all proposed sewer manhole structures shall be furnished with watertight frames and covers. It is recommended that the DPW slash the town of Situate shall replace all existing sewer manholes within the property with watertight frames and covers prior to any additional <coughs> development 
on the property as only the new sewer manholes are included in this <coughs> condition. So the board has to decide which one of those phrases that they that they uh, want. I think it should say the town situate shall. Yes. yes. Yep. Okay. Or the applicant shall. I think it should be the town right. situate. The town situate is really yeah. point of fact the applicant. Okay. Um, eight. Existing sewer connection for the building to be demolished shall be abandoned or capped or sealed to prevent any inflow into the remaining portion of the existing lines. Nine, external cleanouts are required on all of the sewer lines. Ten, the grease trap for the new building shall be updated to include a two-section grease trap containing an inner bathroom wall for better separation of grease and water. The grease trap shall be pumped out on a regular basis as the situate these are that These are wonderful. Does not accept grease loads and a disposal of service slash schedule will need to be arranged. Eleven. Disruption to the existing sewer line shall be avoided in any cross connections between drain and sewer in cases where cross connections are found shall be disconnected from the sewer system. Eleven. Twelve. A copy of the sewer. Thank you. A copy of the sewer permit and curb cut permit shall be provided to the planning board, planning department prior to scheduling for pre-construction conference. Thirteen. Average daily water usage shall be projected and supplied to the water division and copied to the town planner to verify water lines are sized appropriately prior to the pre-construction conference. So Madam Chair. Yes. That has already actually been done. So that condition could be. Eliminated. All existing cash basins with the limit of work shall be equipped with gas tracks. 15 overflows will renumber these as time goes by. 15 overflows from the subservice stormwater infiltration systems will be discharged into the town drainage system located on First Parish Road and Cutbrook Road. The Situa DPW shall provide written approval to the town planner that this is acceptable prior to screening the pre-construction, prior to scheduling the pre-construction conference. All drain, 16, all drainage elevations shall be shown on the plan used prior to construction scheduling the pre-construction conference. 17, in order to minimize conflicts with the recreation center and use of the playing fields and track, the programming of events at the senior center shall be coordinated with the Recreation Department and field use schedule. Coordination of the programming of events at the Senior Center will, will serve to manage the traffic and parking demands of the new use so as to utilize the parking supply and minimize conflicts within the Gates campus and adjacent road work network. Avoidance of peak traffic volume hours for the Senior Center with operation hours primarily between 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. will minimize the impact of the project and allow for efficient use of the parking supply. 18. The applicant shall submit to the board for review a parking monitoring plan for the first six months of full operation of the senior center, at least six months prior to the expected issuance of a certificate of occupancy. The applicant shall implement the monitoring plan as approved by the board. Following the delivery of the monitoring plan final report, the planning board will then determine whether the existing parking is adequate for the senior center and shall, if necessary, direct the applicant to construct the additional 16 spaces or more if necessary in the area of future overflow parking. The Expanded parking shall be subject to the same conditions as the primary parking. 19. It is recommended that the town slash applicant, it's the town, shall install a radar speeder speed feedback sign on First Parish Road east of the project site as an interim measure and the town shall undertake a speed zone study for this section of First Parish Road following mass DOT procedures for speed zoning on a municipal road in order to support a 
reduction in the posted speed limit in this area with consideration of the construction of the senior center. It is recommended this study be done prior to any additional redevelopment of the Gates campus. So before you go on from that, I think we had a choice here, right? Mm -hmm. We did. So I think number 19 should start with the applicant shell. And that the last sentence should be this study shall be done. Okay. And then remove this section about recommendations. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes, sir. Just, from my experience, I would caution against requiring a speed study to reduce speed. I'll defer to the engineers, but in my experience, when you do a speed study, the speed limit actually goes up because the average traffic in that area is traveling at a faster rate than it is posted for now. So to say we shall do a speed study to support a reduction in the speed limit, I can't guarantee that a speed study is going to support a reduction in speed in that area. They say the opposite to the speed should be higher. Okay. Mm -hmm. Look at it when you're done. Okay. Just a caution. Thank you. 20. It is recommended that the town shall install a new ADA crosswalk constructed along the northerly side of First Parish Road from the crosswalk to Central Park Drive for next connectivity. to the Board of Selectmen. Oh, wait a minute. Which what? one no. are you picking on 20? It is recommended that the town? The, <coughs> sure. I, would, I would make that recommended if possible. Again, a, a crosswalk requires engineering. There has to be certain requirements to be placed at a location. If that location doesn't meet those requirements, I can't put a crosswalk there. I don't want to be tripped up, but I have a requirement to put a crosswalk that's not needed. All right. So Recommended if possible. If possible. How about the applicant shall install, if possible? Yes, that's correct. Right. If possible? I can do it if possible before I do it. I would also say, if it's not possible, I guess we'd like to hear why. Yeah, we'd like to hear why it's not possible. <laughs> well, I'll have to have an engineering report that says the site line is supported on the support class one. That's fine. Sideline, sideline speed. Speed. Okay. It is recommended to the Board of Selectmen that Cudworth is converted to a one-way street so that parking is available for the Gates campus. That's number 21. 22. Gasoline, oil, and chemical abrasives shall not be stored on site in the Water Resource Protection District. No road salt shall be used or stored on site no vehicle washing shall occur on site. 23, two signs shall be installed for the fire department vehicle access, demarcating emergency vehicle access only. 24, size and calculations and flow paths for the temporary sedimentation basins shall, provided, shall be provided to the town planner prior to scheduling the pre-construction conference along with the activated NEPTIS permit. <coughs> 25, any security cameras used on the outside of the property shall not view or record above the privacy fence. The privacy fence shall be six, seven, or eight feet. If it's eight feet, they need a permit. If it's seven feet, it's under the permit. Six. Eight, 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 eight. I would say eight. Six is the permit. Twenty-six, the lighting in the parking lot shall be programmable as to an on-off and intensity. All light shall be no higher than 20 feet and shall shine downward and toward the senior center. The lights shall be designed to turn off at night with occupancy sensors to turn the lights on at low power level if there is motion in the parking lot. We need to do two things here. One is to make sure that we've got lights off to the satellite parking spots. Okay. 
as well as lights. What, what did you say? Bob? Lights in the satellite parking lots, as well as my my my, my, my mile marker one, two, three. What's the story on there? Oh, okay. You mean the future, the, the future, future part? Okay. But yeah. even the ones that they are constructing in the back of the building, I mean, the, the ones that they're proposing to pave and turn into directional parking spaces, there needs to be some lighting. I mean, if somebody goes up there in the dark. There is just one there? No. But not in the parking area. 27. The normal operating hours of the senior center shall be 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. Hours of operation of the senior center shall not extend beyond 9 p.m. So I've, I've seen different times here. What, what is the right time for this thing? Is it 9 to 4 or 8.30 to 4 or 8.30 to 4.30? Most of our activities. Uh, what, do, what do you want the operating hours to be? Our operating hours are 8.30 in the morning uh, for staff to 4.30. Okay, but I've just seen it six different ways here. Yeah. And you will not exceed beyond 9 p.m. Yeah. Special events. I'm not looking for special events or... I mean, in that case, we would collect for a special Yes. For a special. yes. Do we put unless a special event in this in this wording? Yes, yes. unless there's a special event. Twenty-eight. The applicant shall design the emergency generator acoustic enclosure so as to limit noise emissions to sixty-five. EBA at three feet. Hasn't that been resolved? No, we're no, still talking about still talking about that. Okay. Twenty-nine, the applicant shall not use building B for any uses without a duly filed site plan review. The applicant is the town. Shall not use building B for any uses without a duly filed site plan review in accordance with the zoning bylaws, which review shall include a comprehensive integrated review of the site and impacts thereof. 30, at the existing entrance to the gate school off First Parish Road. Stone, um, you we can nix that because we are going to put the stones. So, um, yeah, this, or we can, can come back to this. Well, I, 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 well, I, I, I mean, maybe we should keep some of it just yes. to, um, because you're going to have some stone wall, but there is a walkway that's going to go in there, right. and maybe we want some type of bollard on either side of that walkway just to prevent vehicular traffic from going in there. Why are we leaving the curb cut there at all? The, the, the curb cut's going away, but it's getting curved in. Okay, so why would there be okay. vehicular tra traffic there? It wouldn't be, right? There wouldn't be need for bollards. We're putting on the curb and then we're grassing it. And I think if you build a stone wall out to make it a nice entrance for the walkway, you it should be good, right? Yes. Construction. 31. A pre-construction conference will be required prior to the start. Prior to the start. <coughs> which conference shall include a representative of the DPW, the site contractor, the OMP owner's project manager, the town planner and conservation and natural resources officer, and any town departments as necessary are required by the town planner. 32, prior to scheduling the pre-construction conference, a commitment to cover funding for inspections as a consulting engineer for stormwater shall be provided to the planning board a schedule of construction activities shall be given to the town planner along with the stormwater pollution prevention plan, SWIP, and NEPA's permit. The construction general permit and SWIP shall be provided to the town planner for review and approval prior to scheduling the pre-construction conference. 35. All work within the right-of-way of First Parish Road and Cudworth Road shall be coordinated with the DPW the DPW shall be notified prior to the start of work with the 
um, right of way of First Parish Road and Cunworth Road. The other than as required by the necessary work in the right of way, there shall be no parking or idling of vehicles on First Parish Road and Cunworth Road during construction. 34. Stormwater control measures shall be maintained by the applicant according to the long term pollution prevention plan and stormwater operation and maintenance plan submitted for the project and the stormwater pollution prevention plan with. All clearing and earth moving operations shall only occur while erosion and sedimentation control measures are in place. 35. A crushed stone construction entrance as detailed on the plans is required and shall be installed prior to the start of work. Water and sediment shall not be discharged into the infiltration basin until the site is fully stabilized. 36. The town planner is to be notified when erosion control measures are in place, when construction begins, and when construction is completed. If deemed necessary by the town planner in consultation with the DPW engineering staff, temporary sedimentation basins, check dams and silk socks and or noise and dust control may be required in addition to the erosion control measures as shown in the plan. All erosion control measures shall remain until the town planner and as necessary the conservation agent determines that the danger of erosion or sedimentation no longer exists. 37. Construction shall proceed according to the construction phase and plans. 38. Construction work shall not begin prior to 7 a.m. weekdays and 8 a.m. on Saturday and shall cease no later than 7 p.m. or sunset, whichever is earlier. No construction shall take place on Sunday or legal slash federal holidays. 39. The applicant shall maintain a pedestrian access path to the tennis courts and fields from First Parish Road during construction. After construction, 40. A set of as-built plans stamped by a registered surveyor and reviewed by the registered professional engineer who designed the system shall be submitted to the planning board within 30 days of completion of the work. This plan shall include the construction conditions of the stormwater management system, utilities, grading, building, building site amenities, and driveways. The as-built plan must be submitted and such plans must be found in compliance with the approved permit prior to obtaining a certificate of occupancy. All grading and landscaping must be complete prior to the as-built submittal. 41. If signage identifying the building other than for entrance, exit directions, or safety purposes is incorporated at a later stage of the project design, it shall be reviewed by the planning board prior to application for a signed permit. Okay, I move to close the scening. No, 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 okay. I have a couple questions. If yes. Um, it, 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 we do a second here? Yes, a second for discussion. Second. Our discussion. Can we go back to 17 and 18? Sure. Started. Start at number one. one. Okay. <laughs> Okay, All right, number one. Any? Number four. Number four. I think that laundry should include the planning board. Mm -hmm. Material and details of the discussion. Right. Meeting room. Yeah, for mm -hmm. Number four. Okay. Number four. Number four. Um, that stop me when we get to yours. Uh, I'm on eight. Okay, Great. go ahead. Right? No, go ahead. Um, so this says abandoned or cap or sealed. I'm not sure what we're doing here. We thought it was abandoned and capped. Is what's the what's the standard here? Can somebody what did the DPW ask for? This this is this is the condition I was given from the uh, DPW sort of So it could be any of these? Yeah. They might have meant do you think they meant an and instead of the first or and then and cap first, you know? How about and or? Mm -hmm. I think it may depend on what kind of pipe it is, and it, it, it'll be the, the uh, sanitary line that's coming out of the sewer when it gets the ball. Okay. Um, 
at the meeting. Okay. And generally speaking, they'll come out and take a look at what the work is anyway, so I'm sure that they approve. And and yeah, that person. I don't know. How about just and or yeah. one or the other? Yes, we have a huge campus and only half of it can be used at a time. Okay. So this comes into so many constraints on this site. So many constraints. How do we enforce this condition? How are we going to have a sign up sheet? How are we going to do this? I think the assumption, honestly, was always in, in sort of sharing with the space with the recreation department that we would work in collaboration. Um, that we knew that peak times for us thought and would hope and check that they weren't peak times for the recreation department and vice versa. What happens in the summertime, which is the huge issue when the recreation, Mar, are you here? Yeah, we're not talking about that. Anybody for recreation? When you're well, pretty busy there all summer. We've been up there more than several times to see how many children are being dropped off and picked up. That was sort of new information, but at the same time, if it's seasonal, I mean, I, I think there's growing things and we need to determine what can be done, even with the building. We distribute activities so that we can maintain you know, proper. Um, it's about communication. It is. So, so who, who's going to own this? Yeah. Coordination is that the senior what center? Is this the town? The senior center does their scheduling, so we will be in communication. So you coordinate with recreation, and you'll you you'll be you'll take the lead in coordinating with recreation and with the people. Yeah. So I guess the, the ultimate thing is what happens when everybody shows up. Who gets first gifts? Okay. Whoever gets there first. Okay. <laughs> Hours of operation. So I would say recreation in the senior center. Well, off, but recreation is more, <coughs> the time goes by during fall, winter, spring, is more afternoon into the oh, evening. But, but we should talk about every season. And then I don't think we should try to design this here. Okay. If, if yeah. what you're interested in is how is this going to be done, Yes. we could make a condition to come back and tell us how you're going to do this. Yes. Right? <laughs> Sure. Um, also in here we have nine but four. Is this eight thirty or four thirty? Eight thirty four thirty. So we'll we'll put a condition on here for that. Mm -hmm. Is recreation aware of the fact that it was thirteen parking? Yes, yes. I didn't hear a lot of noise. She is. She yes, is. Yes, they are. She's aware. Yep, she's aware. Yeah. Which is why she hopes that um, <clears throat> if the selectmen can see that we're in clear to make the Cudworth go away, that they be able to pick up parking on the Cudworth side of the gym. Okay, and then on 18. At the end of the sentence here, we should add on something to the effect that come um, with build a parking space um, and they'll provide a modified snow management plan. Mm -hmm. if, if I turn on 18 um, procedurally, if there's going to be a six month study of the operation of parking before the certificate of occupancy, the building will have to be turned over under temporary certificate of occupancy. No, no, it says there will be a six month study following the issuance of the certificate of occupancy. We're just asking for the plan six months before that so we know what you're going to do. Okay, I guess I'm not reading this. It, it, it looks like it's once the parking is. Is in use. You'd be doing it, it, your study. It, yeah, it that's is a, right. It is a little redundant. I mean, I can see your confusion. This says the applicant shall submit or for review a parking monitoring plan for the first six full months of the operation of the senior center, right? 
Yeah. And, and it, it's intended to say that that submittal will be at least six months prior to the expected issuance of the, so uh, the certificate of occupancy. Uh, what was the plan before the use of the parking lot? The schedule for the No, parking monitoring. How, how are you going to do it? How are you going to do this monitoring for six months? Suggestion for how to 
minimize the impact on the neighbors on the west. Um, I mean, I guess we can put it into the contract that does, if the temporary lighting has to go out at a certain time, we can put them on timers. Can you put them in a way that would shield them from the west side? Construction fence surrounding the net. That, that's only going to be six feet. It's, it's a fence. construction fence, but that the final fence will be one of the last things to do because there's earthwork that has to be done in that, that whole west side. <coughs> if I if I could go back to one other, um, which was uh, 28, which is the uh, generator feature. Um, Joe had mentioned that we did have a report from. You're a physical engineer, but the distance is seven meters for 65 dBA. Or will it be outside the entire? <coughs> well, they measure at seven meters, not at three feet. But no, I mean, you're, you're building like, like a fence and a wall around it. Right. But that, that's seven meters without anything around it. Right. So well, we'll it's even be dampered more with, with, the, with the fencing around it. So could it be 65 or 3 feet outside of the enclosure, uh, the outside of the final plate? Well, it's, what we're trying to do is tie it to what all the generators are made at. And we're made at 65, 7 meters. That's how the equipment comes. Right. So, we're, I mean, you know, it's not, we can't guarantee you with the fence where it'll be right now. Yeah, I um, do we want to add to condition 28? Why, why don't you just submit something to this? This is the first I'm hearing of this. So. I, I, the first we saw was three feet, was about one hour ago. So we just we had the report done for seven meters, which was the real standard was what I mentioned was the no increase. We can look at it and just have it submitted. And we can so, do we want to say seven to meters? Applicant shall so, so submit a report. Uh -huh. okay. And also, the applicant needs to go before the zoning board to appeal some of the setbacks. Clarification on number 29, uh, prohibition of use of, uh, even incidental use of the B-Wing through the lack of parking. The B-Wing right now enjoys 37 spaces. If this is approved as written, it will enjoy none. I, I do not understand, particularly if this were a civilian applicant, there was no way that he would roll over and say, yeah, I'll give you my 90,000 square foot building to accommodate the parking situation. They have. Pardon me? They have. And, and there have also been assurances given uh, uh, for certain uh, nonprofit uses of the uh, building. And uh, that, uh, that has to be discussed. Uh, because right. if, the, I'm here. And, um, if that falls through, that's grounds for appeal. I mean, it's not in here, and nobody's presented any parking plan for that. Yeah. So, exactly. we're not approving that. Um, Mr. Pedroll. Did they have a discussion with the food pantry going in there? Mm -hmm. But they haven't gone beyond the discussion stage. Um, I'm not sure what kind of approval you want to let the food pantry use the space. We've got a couple of parking spaces at a time, but... Uh, I don't know if the 
to happen to that we get any insurance as we talk about this whole bunch of hurdles and this would be a new one that we'd have to cross. Yeah, we have to see what I don't know how many spaces of food pantry uses and how well, that plays into everything would, else. So soften that requirement instead of saying a full site plan, but before any other use we have to back to the planning board for approval without requiring a full site plan because full site plan well, we're trying to avoid sort of snipping off the tail of the dog one snip at a time. So I think it's perfect to have at least a comprehensive parking plan for whatever you want to use the B-Wing for. Right? Well, what I'm, what I'm saying, Steve, is require us to come back, tell you what the use is going to be, and then you can say yes or do the following. And rather than say right out of the gate, you will do a full, full site plan before you do anything. Well, we're gonna, that's what we're going to ask when you come back. We're going to use it for this. Okay, so what's the parking? What's the lighting? What's the sewer? We're going to ask all the same questions. So, um, the lighting and the sewer will change. They're already there. I, I don't know. Right? The building is in use. So if you want to present something, you can present something. I'm just saying that, you know, if we do this and we do it a piece at a time, it's like boiling a frog, right? I mean, you know, turn the heat up. You know, slowly enough, you'll boil them, right? So uh, that's all I'm saying is that we're, we're already you know, halfway into this without well, having done a comprehensive that, plan. You have to have a discussion with the planning board. I'm arguing with the requirement that is a full site plan before you come back to the planning board. That's all. If I come back and say it's two cars and they're going to park here, the planning board would say, great. Or you could say, no, I want you to do a site plan. That's all. Just to give you flexibility to make decisions without requiring a lot of extra work on your part. Well, we always have that flexibility. <coughs> yes. I've done some volunteer work. Would you please call Patrick Seaton, 26 Dr. Hill. Some volunteer work at the food pantry, and it's a lot more than two cars. I haven't counted heads. But you have all the volunteers and then all the people coming and going. I would say at times there's 50 to 20 cars there. Don't quote me on that, but you really have to look into that if that's going to be a usage there. There, but there are 10 cars that park there for the volunteers, plus there are people in and out of there picking up and dropping off. Yeah. Yeah. On a busy Tuesday afternoon, I'm on the Which place are we talking about? Food pantry. And Thursday. And Thursday. So so Tuesdays is over 30 cars. 30 cars. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. uh, not all at once, Jeff. <coughs> there, have been, there have been many times where there are 30 cars in that parking lot. Okay. All right. So well, I, I think we could say, you know, it has, you know, we need a duly filed application. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Application. So what do you want it to say? <laughs> duly filed application. The with a with a duly filed application. Yes. Okay. To the plan. Instead of site plan or the right. application. Because yeah. that could be special site plan and mm -hmm. it could be all kinds of things. Our request for a week. Huh? Our request for a week. Yeah. Okay, is there anything else? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. <coughs> Do we have a second discussion? As amended. As amended. Second. second. All right. Discussion. We'll start with Rebecca. Ben? Um, you know, I said most of what I have to say. I do think some of these conditions, as um, Mr. Hunt brought up, some of these try to find line philosophically for me of whether we would allow this for private app developer applicants. Bill. No, mostly. Yeah. You know, everything that's all we can say. Steve. No, I think we've said it all. I, you know, we're, we're uh, barely at the hurdle, I think. All right. Well, you're not going to do so. Huh? Okay, we'll take a vote. We'll start with Bill. Yes or no? A reluctant yes. Got it. No. Ben. Yes. Steve. Yes. 
My turn. I am so disappointed with how all of this came about. I really, truly am. This is, this is, we've got your senior center. I'm voting no. So it's three to two. It passes. So you want to do the final motion if there's no further discussion? There's no further discussion. I move to close the scenic road and site plan review and stormwater public areas for the senior center. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Policy event. Somewhere I have an agenda. Right here. So much. Yeah. We have an informal discussion for situate and the canopy. Okay. Uh, my name is Henry Yang, 16 Wood Island Road, situate. Um, I'm part of the organization called the Friends of North Situate Village. It's a nonprofit formed during the summer. And our mission is to improve North Central. Um, we thought that maybe the first project that we uh, can work on, and we have proposed to the CDC, is to uh, restore the historical uh, site of the canopy area. And as you can see, the current view, um, the, there are three sections, I'll call these sections the day. The, the three sections in the front was originally part of the train station, was on the other side, but next to the building. The building was a train station. So that was moved based on uh, back in 2011, 2014 time frame. <clears throat> and ever since then, uh, the money ran out uh, doing that project, so they never quite finished the project. And so what the, the French North Central Village uh, Committee, we would like to finish the project, or we're proposing to finish the project, as you can see uh, in the graphic representation of, of North uh, on, on the right side. And, and the canopy itself, if you look up on the ceiling, it's all the nails coming through. And we thought we'd finish with the cedar siding. Um, and, and go beyond that, um, we're going to put lights under there. And so those are just a visual a picture that you can see. And can we just go forward? And the other thing I discovered is, you know, when people uh, either getting the sandwiches or getting the ice cream uh, at dribbles, and they would stand here and, uh, eating ice cream when they see the train coming, they're very excited. Um, it's not making all the noise, and you know, people like to wave. Um, so uh, we thought it would be a great open space as well. Um, so the proposal really is to finish up uh, the concrete quarry and put up, finish the ceiling, put up the lights, and, and put, the, uh, put up the receptacle and also put up uh, uh, ADA approved uh, benches and uh, uh, picnic table. So uh, there's the uh, bench. Uh, so the ADA approved will be short. One section is eight, one section is four. And so all on wheelchair and also on hand. Um, so this proposal has been made to, um, uh, to the CPC and uh, and uh, Sheree tried to get, get me on your calendar earlier, but it couldn't, so I hope it's not too late. No, it's not too late. As a matter of fact, if memory serves me correctly, CPC approved. CPC has approved it. Yes, yeah, CPC has approved it. Um, yeah. the, the concern, and I think you have talked to the police department. Yep. And what was the result? Uh, uh, this is me. Yes, Tyler Billings has a visit the place, the North Side Joint. And he basically says he doesn't think we need, he need to do anything, but he said, why don't you just put in a one day of detailing and that when eight hours can be split up as needed. Um, I'm sorry, what, what are we doing for? What's that for? Oh, what? just when we put the installation. Huh? You're talking about police detail? Yeah. So they, they can put up the uh, signs uh, or, or the police 
uh, barricade mm -hmm. in the parking spots. Um, well, you're talking about during construction. During construction. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But what I'm saying is this: this really does not affect parking. No. No, this is no, really a pedestrian. Yeah. Access type of thing. Right. Does the roof get redone? No. But that's no. already been done. No. The roof is no leak. Roof is yeah. yeah. great expense. Yeah. 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 Great expense. So. And it's a home for our friend. Yes. Frankie Warren ends up up there. So, so um, the, the proposal has been uh, supported by multiple commissions, uh, rec, rec department, historical uh, commission, and historical uh, restoration society. The society and the commission. Right. And, uh, uh, Planning board today and DPW. I have one with, uh, with DPW about um, the concrete work, and they will be uh, coordinating the partnership with the, uh, either pub uh, construction or uh, 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 what's the other one. But anyway, I got multiple bids, and um, the package that you have, uh, Jerry put online and has all the support letters and has uh, some of the bids. And the last thing I want to mention is <clears throat> it, after this all completed, we're going to put up a sign, three-sided sign, um, that I thought uh, North Situate could be a good entry point for people coming into Situate. Instead of drive down to the harbor, they, they come to North Situate, they can see the history of the North Situate, as well as there's a map that I'm proposing, will show the walking, biking trail map, and and shows the some historical significance, and you know the beach, the ball field, etc., and so they can get a a, a view, a perspective where everything's are. Um, so one one signage, there's a three side signage. One signage will be the of his history of North Central train station. And the second signage will be the North Central Gannett Corner and the Bailey map. Um, that kind of preserves some of the things that, you know, that the Central uh, had. Um, so, so that's, uh, that's it. That's it. Okay. Uh, comments from the board? Um, yeah. I, I assume that since everybody's looked at it, that all of this furniture and everything is supposed to be sort of period. I mean, it's supposed to all tie together, or yeah. is that why we settled on iron as opposed to some other kind of bench material? Or uh, is, is that how it was originally laid out? I, I don't no. know. No. So, the, oh, the original, no, well, originally there's nothing there, right? That's a canopy. The, the station, which those buildings, right? The benches are in there. Right? Um, are they similar I, to what you're proposing? They will work. No, they will work. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm proposing this. One is because it's going to be all the work. And two is I've worked with uh, Lorraine. Um, yeah, Lorraine Devin. You're right. And that's what the uh, Central Harbor has, those benches. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they will last a long time. Right. And the third, it has to be permanently, permanently uh, mounted. So it's not movable. So those adventures are ready for that. Mm -hmm. It's from the same company that uh, everything else we work with. And who will be responsible for maintaining going forward? Um, for the trash collection will be uh, DPW. And you know the ground keeping will be DPW. Um, I was in town structure. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So the so DPW is responsible yes. for that yeah. too yeah. by the town. So it has to be painted or whatever. Yep. It's all town responsibility. Right. And and I'm pretty sure France North Central will also participate. Okay. Um, is there any uh, proposed changes in your budget to the kind of landscape design and planting scheme that's there right now? Just looking, knowing you're looking at the pictures, that that aspect's kind of a little bit uninviting. <laughs> it probably could draw a lot more people in. And, 
there was some improvements made to that green space. There, there isn't. Uh, not right now. Okay. Um, we might. Have I, I'm not so sure. Yeah, right. But I'm not so sure that's the CPC funding we have covered it. So that's why I'm doing it. And CPC is already voted on the funding. Yes. Right? Okay. Yeah. But that would be something that would cover that. Yeah. Flowers? Yeah. Landscape is part of the deal, right? They did for the little park across the street, right? Planted the trees and all that. Now, what, with the playground? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure we can work that out. Um, no? Bill? Well, so maybe you can do a North Citrus good. Yes, I agree. Andrea? Um, I just wanted to say that, yes, that was a canopy, like Henry said, and I thank you, Henry, for doing this. This is wonderful. Um, but when the train station was there and the benches were inside, they were wood, mm -hmm. but there were a couple of iron benches right outside the back door. And on either side of the back door when you went out, there were iron benches. They were a little more Victorian looking than that, but those benches are a very good style to go along with what was originally there for the outside iron benches. Just to answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll add that uh, the landscaping on both either side of the tracks was uh, an MBTA uh, venture as part of the mitigation plan, and they were to maintain it for one year, at which point the town was supposed to assume uh, caretaking of the, uh, of the landscaping, which was actually very nice when it was first installed. But as you can see, uh, it has fallen into uh, disrepair. So, well, I'm sure we can figure that out as time goes by. So this, this picture was taken before uh, any training was done, yeah. and I, I did some training. Uh, but I used to paint the old bus stop too. But yes, yeah, somebody made a comment says, you know, those are milkweed in front. Says, you know, don't be served that. So, you know, you, either you keep natural or you trim it, then you have to get rid of the same thing. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I'm, I'm open. This is a town. So, I'm open to. All right, well, you know what, you're here to get, and we need to move on because it's getting yeah. late. Yeah. All right, um, we have a draft motion. The planning board is in support of the front of North Central plan to restore the train canopy in North Central. Is there a second? Second. <coughs> yeah, yes. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay, that's done. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, we now have a public meeting. I apologize that we're 15 minutes I late. Should have done it. I should have done it. Um, 111 Front Street. Who's here for that? What's up? Hello. How are you? Front Street. Front Street's dead. Good news of that one. Trying to fix that. Okay, do you introduce yourself? I am Blaine Curtis. I'm 111 Front Street. It's a two tenant building. Uh, Harborside Wine and Spirits is a uh, Karnaka on one side. The other side uh, used to be the silent chef. It's been unoccupied. I recently bought the building and trying to move in a new tenant. Uh, it would be uh, Bill and Tammy Kieran's. Uh, we're uh, trying to bring in a, a full surface uh, breakfast, lunch, uh, restaurant. So the waiver is for parking. Obviously, uh, parking in the Harbor District is very challenged. Um, I would say that I'm not aware of any building that actually uh, satisfies the parking requirements. Uh, my, and I, actually, I got a parking plan today, I passed along, I don't know if you guys got a copy of it, but essentially my building has 14 or 15 spots if you max it out. Um, by no means that will satisfy any of the requirements of your building for any use. Um, obviously a restaurant would require uh, some more seating and um, that's what we've asked for is a a waiver on the parking to uh, allow for the restaurant use and um, 75 seats, which would require 18 uh, parking spots. And obviously, the, I wrote a memo that, you know, the kind of three points are, if you look at the uh, section 760, um, proximity of public parking, obviously the Cole Parkway is across the street, you know, we kind of abut Riva and then it's diagonally across. Um, obviously, there's a street parking that starts on uh, the corner and kind of moves towards, I would say, Galley, who's another restaurant who doesn't have parking. Um, and then, uh, you know, I would say the other area to highlight is the fact that this would be a breakfast and lunch uh, uh, business 
whereas the other, a lot of the other businesses are 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 uh, uh, dinner only. So if you look at Oro, um, uh, Galley, um, those are uh, going to have a closing hours, and then obviously we have a liquor store there, and actually the the exhibits are here today, and they can you know respond to their hours. Obviously they're open on a wide array, but you'd assume the peak hours of the liquor store would be uh, more later hours and weekends versus Sunday brunch and uh, morning breakfast. Any comments from the board? What are you going to do inside the building? So the, the Silent Chef, I don't think they've done work in there in 50 years. So uh, we're going to have to do an interior renovation. There'll be no changes to the exterior of the building other than paint that hasn't been done in 30 years. Um, and uh, you know, I think uh, maybe clean up the awning, but no, no, phys no changes to the actual outside structure other than cleaning it up and then obviously um, you know, setting it up for uh, more seating in the front. The kitchen is actually huge, it's a catering business. So we'll, we'll, we'll um, make that a little bit smaller. So you got enough room to put in 75 seats? Yeah, I mean, Bill, Bill and Tammy here, they have, I mean, that's their plan, but I mean, it's, it's 20 point tables and it's quite a large space, it's 2,200 square feet. Yeah. Okay. You rent any kitchen and make the kitchen small. The kitchen actually has some dead space, so it's not really changing anything. The location of the cooking facility is dishwashing. They're all going to be reused. Um, coolers and everything. I mean, there's really nothing you need to do other than move the front wall back, add in seating, obviously just clean it up. It hasn't been, been uh, you know, touched in a long time. You know, there'll be some hurdles, bathrooms and such for, for that use, but we'll tackle that a little bit. Yeah. I want to encourage anything going into the hub. I don't know. Convenient timing, yeah. I mean, I think I've bought this. I mean, I'm in Coas. I've been there 14 years. So I would say I've been unsolicitedly approached saying Front Street's dead. I mean, I'm someone who actually wants to invest in situated Front Street. And, yeah. Right. And I, I think parking is going to be a waiver that's going to need to be done a lot. And that's just my opinion. You guys are the planners. But I think um, getting more traffic down there is going to require a lot of waivers on parking if you want to you know, revitalize that. And how much parking do you have? Like I said, the, in the parking plan, which I can give you a copy, I don't know if you guys got it. Yeah. It came today, I apologize, it's just late. Yeah, so. Do you guys have it? I got them copies. Oh, you got them yeah. copies. All right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're not even marked, it's just one big open space, mm -hmm. but. Um, so I quickly got a plan together, but it'll be... No, the silent chef used to park all of his big trucks down on Cold Parkway. Overnight, and for its duration. Mm -hmm. So, anything would be better than that. Um, mm -hmm. um, then? Well, uh, do you envision with the new operations that the like, trash waste, waste management will remain the same? Uh, and yeah, I mean, obviously I'm not going to be running the business, but there's currently a dumpster and cardboard removal. They were actually sharing that with um, Reba, or not Reba, um, oh, I mean, Reba, Reba, yeah, across the street. So there won't be any changes to They were sharing a dumpster with Reba? Well, Reba has no space, right? I mean, the building is the lot, right? So, I mean, I'm not going to coordinate any of that. That's not going to be, as a landlord, my responsibility, but there'll be some routine with that dumpster and some arrangement by the tenants. Um, my other question, I'm all for I'm all for parking waivers in central business districts. I mean, I'd rather have everything be more walkable and have less cars given the large municipal lot that we have available to us anyways on the other side of Cold Parkway. Um, my only question is current, uh, if you're going to reuse the existing parking area, you, I see that you're showing that it's going to be, it's going to be striped which I think will help a lot there since it's kind of a free-for-all. But um, are there going to be any designated um, handicap spots that's not really shown on here? It it's hasn't right. come up, although um, obviously open to that, there's room. Um, I'm more than happy to. The plan is to repave the lot once a new tenant moves in, and then we'll strike that at that time. And if there's a you know a, a desire for such, and I don't see any reason. Yeah, you should. Yeah. If not a desire, I think you should. Yeah. I, mean, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, there's room for it. Okay. Um, Rebecca? Just get the price of one. one yeah. Yeah. This is this is shared with the Harbor side liquor. Yes. And you'll have an existing so. one now, right? What's that? This is the existing parking. That's a proposal. Right now it's just one big open space. Mm -hmm. yeah.
visited. There's no striping right now. That's the oh, proposal okay. that I have put together. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's a shared no space. Stripe. Okay, that's what you're saying. Okay. What's right next door to this? So uh, there's the music store. I can't see. Yeah, the, the, that's actually, I believe, Jerry's residential. In Jerry's in the front yep. on Front Street, and he really has no parking. Then I believe there's a residential that backs up to that. And then the lobster associations on the back side. And then is, um, there is space in between what was the silent chef and Front Street Gourmet, which is now vacant. Jerry owns that. That's, yeah, his he, that's his property. Um, he ch chooses not to use it down the road. I don't know. That's, that's his problem. His property. Okay. All right. Um, Harborside Rivers, do you have any comments? Harborside Rivers, here. Yeah. Taylor Tibbetts, 16 Lawson Terrace. Um, the thought of a 70 seat restaurant going in next door to us that doesn't have adequate parking for the said number of tables, I don't know what the criteria is. Um, would be a tremendous detriment to our business and the customer flow for us, um, regardless of the time of day. Um, we're new tenants. We've recently purchased the building. We want activity on Front Street as well. We've been down there for 21 years. We've, um, in the time span that we've been there, we've painted the building on our side a couple of times and put a few new awnings up and uh, tried to maintain a nice look out there. Um, but the you know parking in the harbor is an issue, and everyone that comes down to the harbor just thinks that there's plenty of room over in Cole Parkway, and that is not the case. You know, come down on a busy summer day in the morning, and you know you know that it's parking is a difficult, uh, it's a, ch a challenge for customers as well as employees, uh, business owners, and a 70 seat restaurant that doesn't have adequate parking would be a detriment to us. And you know people already park in our parking lot and shoot over to CVS and do this and do that and that aren't supporting us, but do support us at other times, you know? So you just have to take, you know, the fact that you're trying to make other people's lives convenient, you know? But that would uh, not be good. Just to make one comment that- And we a, only have like 12 spaces out there, not 14 or 15. There's two refrigerators out there, there's two dumpsters that aren't. And as far as the handicap space, I don't think the building's handicap accessible anyway, so the handicap space wouldn't make much sense. Yeah, I'd like to address. So obviously parking at current, currently there's not in the, the write-up that I did, I said 10 to 12 cents try to work to improve and I'm trying to help the situation. In terms of handicap accessible, I mean obviously a restaurant use, we'll have to cross that bridge if you guys approve this as to what the requirements are for a restaurant and whether there is a requirement for a handicap lift and access and um, down the road. So I'm open to any of those uh, solutions. I would also say that um, in Harborside One and uh, Spirits lease, they are guaranteed three spots. So there is a, you know, I could split this lot in half. I don't think it's in the best use to anybody. I mean, I have two tenants that are roughly the same size and I could split it down the middle and put a fence up, but um, at the end of the day, the hours are different. I think it's best used to, to, to have it more shared. Um, but I do recognize that it's a different business carrying cases of beer out <laughs> and ice. And so I've tried to accommodate that with local spots. And I think that was, that, that's a solvable solution, in my opinion. Okay. Um, Dr. Price. Um, Gordon Price, 48 year um, 45-year business in Carpenter and Harvard. Harbor. Um, I don't think I can remember seeing the Harbor quite in the state that's in right now. I like the gentleman's plan. I sympathize with Taylor. I feel it was a phenomenal business. Um, I think we could welcome another restaurant in town with the breakfast and lunch place. Um, I think maybe designating spaces for sales business, maybe four or five or three uh, might, might work. Um, I think that probably a lot of people who are going into Harbor Spirits probably are just kind of running in and running out. So, um, it's probably not as much of an inconvenience for them to have to park in Cold Park with than someone who's going to go into the restaurant and spend 45 minutes to an hour. Um, so, um, you know, I, I, I think there's probably a balance here uh, to, 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 to accommodate Taylor and his business with some designated spaces. Um, you know, the hardware company, the government, 45 minutes to an hour. 
five years. So, um, but I, I think I think it's a good plan. Basically, a good plan to make these increasing with the parking. What is the what is the law as far what is the requirement as far as the parking is concerned for a restaurant or an indoor retail such as us? Yeah. All right. Um, this is actually just more than a parking waiver. This the, the application is for a site plan waiver because it's a change in use from what was there. So the board has to consider all the other site conditions um, involved. And I mean, I I I have written. I have written a positive waiver decision and a negative waiver decision, but it's, it's, it's the whole element of site plan review, which you just sat through on the senior center, mm -hmm. that, has to be, that has to be considered. So, um, you know, I have, written, I have written both a positive and a negative determination for a waiver, but it's, it is more than just parking. Could I, could I address that? So obviously there's going to be a lot more hurdles, but I view everything that's been raised to me as fixable. If, you, if there's not a waiver on parking, it's kind of a dead issue. I need a waiver on parking, to, and then we can tackle the restaurant issues. You know, I'll have to deal with grease traps and all that kind of stuff, right? But I kind of feel like until we have an approval, at least on that point, there's no point in satisfying the rest. But you're asking for a waiver on everything here, so. Well, I, I, he applied for a site plan waiver, right. which is a, it's, it's more than just a parking waiver. Mm -hmm. Right. Can we make the rest conditions on this? Well, the thing is, if you were to come in for um, a full just do a site, plan a site plan review, doesn't mean that you're not going to get a waiver for parking. It just means we want to look at everything. That's right. Time. I guess, yeah, that's my point. It's a lot of money and time, mm -hmm. and uh, at the end of the day, if parking's not satisfied, the rest of them are the issue. Well, I understand where you're coming from, but this is in the best interest of everybody, okay. both for your other tenant and for you. Okay. Okay? So, um, I think that it is in your best interest to, to come in for site plan waiver. Site so administration review. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 No, no. We, we just this is a change of use. I went to the catering business and now we want seventy five seats. And that, that's a lot. That's a lot. And while we applaud you for doing stiffing up the place and bringing in more people. We have to cross our T's too. Okay. Mr. Hunt. Yeah, I can't recall a single case where off street parking requirements were imposed on a front street business due to no, the proximity of municipal parking. So, I mean, to me, the issue would be moot, but unless something's changed in the last few years. I'm just in a position where I want the new tenants to start their process and not waste money. Obviously, it's a timing issue and a cost issue, and that's why I wanted to approach just this particular point. The rest of more is palpable, as I said. I need new sewer drain, I need new sewer drain. It's not. Karen? I mean, I, I've written a site plan waiver that is consistent with the same conditions you would ask for for a site plan review mm -hmm. but I mean if you want to add more stuff in here I mean that is one way to approach it will you have a license I'm, I'm the landlord right it would be the tenant oh, okay. hey. <laughs> I don't know the first but are you tenants they have the option of applying for one and they come in. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm in favor of not granting the waiver, looking for a full review. Right, with the understanding at least I voted in law of parking and co parkway for everything under the law. You can find a spot and put a car in, that's what I'll vote for. So, what are you saying? You want them to come back for full reviews? I think it's right. What if I can, just to be clear, I mean, obviously, um, I'm, I can research and figure out.
figure out what you want. But in terms of what are the sticking points in this full site review, it would be an issue. They already has a functional kitchen. To be honest, we're shrinking the kitchen. So I talked to the sewer commissioner. It's actually a, a, reduce, a reduction of use, not an increase, right? So the only thing that is actually functionally different that I'm doing with this entire building is adding seats. And those seats will use a smaller kitchen. So I, it's a catering business that was doing probably more dishwashing than they will do. So it's doing high volume catering affairs. Um, I think the only thing that's really functionally changed is the flow of the building. Well, once upon a time, a long time ago, maybe Mr. Hunt remembers this uh, a long time ago, before the silent chef went in there, didn't that used to be the Garden of Eden? No, it was the Fox's yeah, Deli. Yeah, Fox's Deli? Yeah, yeah, Fox's Deli. <laughs> <laughs> it was a restaurant. It was yeah. a restaurant. Yes. It was a 32-seat restaurant. It was a delicatessen, mm -hmm. New York-style deli. Boots. So where did that go? <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. I, I never went in the silent chef, I don't know, but there was room for seats. There must yes, have been there was seats. Yeah. Or yeah. half dozen tables. Well, not much, yeah. I, I tend to agree with Bill that we ought to just go through the process. We do it with everybody else. I don't know why we wouldn't do it here. How did we deal with uh, You know, I think we've, we've dealt with many of these on Front Street, and we've generally been uh, okay with parking and cold parkway. So. I can't give you a definitive answer on this, when, but you know, I think we need to give everybody the opportunity mm -hmm. to see the whole plan, including you know the the abutters and everybody else, and just go through the process. Taylor, I was just curious when everybody thinks Cole Parkway gets maxed out. Uh -huh. I got it. <laughs> um, right. My name is Debbie Carroll. I live across the street from where the restaurant will be. I'm all for it as far as with, you know, businesses and so forth. But I will say that um, my 124 Front Street condominium association that I've been, um, that have, I voiced my opinion, but I've sent documentation and all the stuff to the Millwork, um, my, the Millwork project that was done back in 2001. I'm still fighting for parking for my condo association uh, for our residents. Um, and in which case, again, when does it stop? Like the influx of of the um, people coming in, which is overwhelming for Cole Parkway. We've been told that we can't park in Mill Ward Parkway any longer. Um, they, they in, it's it's when is it going to stop? The you, we have Mulaney's now, they're going to do that, now 75 C. Again, I'm, I'm all for businesses. <coughs> I can't even get home at night, and it doesn't matter what time of year, Friday night, first Friday, can't get home. You know. I'm not sure what that means. You can't get home. Can't I can't get home. I have to go to my cousin's house up in Hazel Street just to get home on first Friday night. And this, and this, only eight units, uh, residential units, and I still can't get acknowledgement for this. Who built the condo? The Warner. Hmm? Warner. Um, Madam Warner. Chair? Yes. Um, we've done some research into Ms. Farrell's issue, and as far as we know, that never had parking. But in light of all that being said, the town is working on a program to address long-term overnight parking in that area that does not flood. So the town is working on a program to try to address those concerns. That, you know, in, in saying that the, um, it's not about necessarily all about the flooding. Agreed, my car was flooded because of the, uh, parking situation or the parking situation they guys created a, or what a A B C D parking where we are on parking. We didn't create it. We didn't create it. I can't figure that one out. No, not yeah. really. But I was we were in D parking, got flooded, however, cost a lot of money, got a new car or whatever. There's a, a, a few of us that ha that happened. It's not that we I have um, 
it, this is a different subject altogether. You guys are going on with, with the, the restaurant and so forth. I'm just simply saying that we have an influx of people that are coming in over now the, the, the boats. Um, you, you, you can't just say that the boat owners have one person. There's at least two par at least two cars, if not their family members. They're overnight for, you know, it could be a week. They could stay on, on the uh, uh, on vacation. It could be a week that they're there. They're parked there. Of course, we know about the um, uh, the, the, the commercial trucks that are over in the in Cole Parkway as well that are uh, lined up there. It's just I, I agree with was it Taylor? Taylor. Taylor? When's it gonna stop? Or that, when is I it? think that's a decision for you guys. Because that's I've been issue. approached at Front Street signing. I've looked at every property available. I, I mean, if, 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 if it's, you can't have retail down the whole strip. You need a diversity of businesses. I see this as a business that you don't have currently. I understand the desire to look at a site plan. It's gonna cost me money, it's gonna cost a tenant a ton of money. At the end of the day, that's a that's a tough process if you that's the burden um, to for, for me to you know build these buildings for you on, on Front Street. So um, yeah, I understand. I was hopeful that we could uh, expedite this. Um, you know what? It, I, I think the point being is that I mean we need to look at whether you want a full Front Street or an empty Front Street. I'm not a situate resident. I, I I personally would like to see a full Front Street, but. That, that's for you guys to, to, to shepherd. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kelly. Jerry Kelly, 56 Marine Road. Uh, I don't have a dog in this fight. Um, when I drive down Front Street any time of year, but, but particularly in the winter, it's vacant. It's depressing. And here's somebody that wants to transform a derelict property I guess what I would include, and yes, uh, the garden business there. Have you seen our store? Sorry. Yes, I've been in your store. Okay. I'm a patron. All right, but not, no, we're not calling down. I'm right. talking no. about, I'm yeah. talking you about, know, about the I mean, I'm talking about the former silent chef Thank property. You. Is is that being occupied now? It is not. All right. The issue is that. So maybe the term is vacant, mm -hmm. but. Thank you. I, I um, want to satisfy your request. I mean, the risk to me as a landlord is that they could just tell me, hey, I don't want to do this. And you're going to lose that tenant. And I'll have to go find another one. All right, so we have someone running a successful business in Marshfield who wants to invest in situate downtown. I understand the site process. We're, we've already had to wait for this meeting. And I understand the risk. We're trying to expedite this and, and move the business in. So I, I, we'll, we'll try to satisfy it. I can't guarantee you. It will be sitting back here. I don't have a dog in the fight either. It's not my business. It's, it's Bill and Tammy's. And I can't force them to spend money to, to fight to get this application in. It's not a fight, sir. No, it I, is it's not a standard fight. process. It's yeah. a process. It all the time. Right, right. It's a process. And in a sense, it protects them as well as the town. It's a process. <clears throat> and there's been some issues down there in terms of parking. I mean, I'm a business owner myself. I have virtually no parking, and my whole thing is, if I have something that people want, then they come, I get them, okay? And I've been there for almost 30 years, I'm still in business. So if you have a product, regardless of whether or not you have parking, they will show up. I understand, I'm just telling you that uh, if we walk out and the plan is to come back to the full site review, I can't guarantee you're going to come back. But I, you know, forgive me, but I feel that's a threat. And it really is, that if you don't give me what I want right now, we might not come back. Well, I'm just... I know. Okay. Mr. Kelly, you would hand up again? Madam no, Chair, sure, you're correct. Back in the 1980s, there was a full-service restaurant operating in the facility called the door of the Yes, it was. They had great dispatcho. At any rate, <laughs> um... I was talking in the 60s. Well, you know, you're older than I am, so there you go. Um, <clears throat> all right, what is the pleasure? Coffee, please. 
What is the pleasure of the board? I, I'm still in the same place. I just say, let's just go through it. I mean, we do it with everybody, and there's no reason we shouldn't do it here. And it's not, it's not difficult. It's, it's just a process, right? Jim? And we expect that from every business owner, right? Yes. So. Did, didn't you uh, chair the, 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 the huge parking study that included the Harvard District, right? Wasn't that you? That was back in that early 90s, yes. Yeah. So planning is a pretty cool thing to do. I, I, I submit that a search for additional parking would, uh, would be uh, in your own best interest. And if memory serves me correctly, you were involved with a couple of other characters that wanted to put um, a parking garage behind the shell station, if memory serves me correctly. Oh, yeah? You and Mr. Cahill and somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, Uncle Bathory is true. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay. He's sitting right there. I know he is. <laughs> so, and you know what else it has been somewhat of a detriment for Park <coughs> Street and actually to Hingham Square, a lot of other places, real estate agents take up a tremendous amount of space. Real estate, and then they took a building in, in the Welsh Company and turned it into ATMs. Well, here's a, here's a, a snippet for you. When the Mill Wharf restaurant was built, the special permit, that, it was a special permit then, not in those days, not a major site plan review, there was actually a special permit under uh, 48 section 6. Uh, the special permit major condition was that the Mill Wharf Welch Company parking lot was to be open to the public in perpetuity. You and might want to look that up. I remember that, Jim, and I also remember the fact that when T.K. O'Malley's been in, the Mill Wharf restaurant put up gates to prevent people. I tried to go through all of the minutes that went back for it, but we digress. What do we, let's, 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 let's go this way, as opposed to going down to memory lane. Okay. All right, Patty. I think would, I would just recommend it. I don't know that we need to, I mean, unless you want us to make a decision, I would suggest you just come back. We don't have to deny this. Just withdraw without yeah. prejudice and come back with a side plan. She will help you and your tenants and then make this happen. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy to try to satisfy. I yes. wish I better understood the position. Yeah. Yeah. But just withdraw without prejudice. I'll entertain a motion that the applicant was wrong about pledges. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. You. You. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the next thing we have is Form A for the 15th time on uh, 44 Ocean Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, they're not coming. Tonight. It's. Um, <laughs> This is, um, this is our plan of land that you've seen two other times before. It has access and frontage, and all they're doing is adding, they're taking a little bit more land from the um, big house and putting it in the back of the, uh, of the house, so that, of the second house, so that they have, can have a backyard. Okay. We can't do anything other than enjoy support. It, it's got access in front of it. That's all that matters. I mean, they're just adding more <coughs> land to the lot. Okay. You want me to show the plan? I'll show you. No, no. no, 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 the, no the, the applicants aren't going to show. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. We have to do it. No, we continue it. No, we're, we're, running, we're running close to the 21 days. I move to endorse it as approval not required. Plan of land, time situate, mass, excuse me, the about, yoo -hoo. Um, 44 Ocean Avenue, prepared by Morse Engineering and Company, Inc. For applicant owner Donald F. and Joan and Gillespie, dated 8-21-19. As the vision of land shown on the accompanying plan is not a subdivision because it shows every lot on the plan has frontage of at least the distance presently required under the situate zoning by law on the public way of Ocean Avenue and is shown a proposed conveyance or change in a lot line which does not alter the existing frontage as required under the situate zoning 
bylaw. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. Okay. So it's order one? Aye, yeah, sorry. Order one. Okay. All right. So that's it. <coughs> um, now we have accounting. Okay, a neutral court the requisition of $221.10 to Daylight Media for legal ads for Fender Wood Lane and 443-461 Chief Justice Cushy Highway for $19.69 for Brad Washburn for violent reimbursement, for $250 to Chesley Consulting for sure the estimate for the one, for $21.50 to Brad Washburn for violent reimbursement, and $90 to MAPD for the annual division of Brad Washburn. Is there a second? Yep. All in favor? Right. Next we have um, minutes. I move to approve the meeting minutes for August 22nd, 2019. Second. All in favor? All right. Uh, not that I wasn't here, so I'm not for it. Okay. Um, Liaison reports. Conservation, um, listen to the Citra Beach Association again. I gave way for permission um, after the fact or something, yeah. and they were awarded a negative three. I don't know what that means in the conservation world. Um, because they they came before us last year to tell us about story the trails, and they assured us that nothing else was going to happen. Yet they hired a landscaping company to put 12 cubic yards of gravel in there into the channel. So um, the conservation commission suggests that they. Um, put markers or a fence along the uh, edge of it and um, make sure that nobody cuts any more of, of the marks or dumps anything else into it. They didn't ask them to take it out? No. Unfortunately. They did say that they could probably not afford to put it a fence and the Conservation Commission was not impressed. <laughs> Told them to raise the use. So hopefully uh, the Conservation Commission is going to go out with Frank Snow and they're going to walk the property line and tell them they're going to put these markers apparently that are permanent. This is the one we looked at before, right? Yes, they came before us and, and that's what they said. Well, and they said with a change of um, leadership, nothing gets forwarded. Um, but they was concerned about, there was like 12 boat trailers there. And the parking lot has extended quite a bit into the back of the wetlands. So, uh, they have been chasing yet again and seeing if this does not happen again. What did, what did they come in to us for our comments? Did, did we give them approval on something? They came in for an informal discussion and to see if they needed to do um, a, a waiver or set, come in for a site plan for parking. And what did they do? You guys gave them a pass. We, we gave them a waiver? No, you just, it was an informal discussion and you said, you said they did not have to file. Because they weren't going to do anything, right? That's what they said. That's what they said. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, anybody else? Um, yes, I've been actually very busy with the Shellfish Advisory Committee. Um, I, attended their meeting this week to finalize their rules and regs document and I also attended the Waterways public hearing where they presented the rules and regs to the Waterways Commission for their advisement to the Board of Selectmen. And uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. So if, if you're not familiar, the Department of Marine Fisheries has authorized, I mean this years ago, it's been authorized for years, but there's a, there's a, a, a potential shellfish aquaculture growing area outside of Briggs Harbor, like on the inside of the glades. For like oysters? Uh, for whatever, yeah. hard shell clams, soft shell clams, oysters. Um, and the town really had no, like a man had applied, shellfish man had applied a couple, last year, and the town was like, well, we don't know what to do with this application. So we started a shellfish advisory committee we're forming uh, the rules and regs so that we can get this going with the state. It's, um, mm -hmm. it's a state program, but town, the tide lands are under the jurisdiction of the right. town, so um, it's it's pretty interesting. There's some, you know, back and forth between uh, the waterways, the, the advisory commission, and and then also the board of selectmen, who they hope to have everything ready to go to the board of selectmen um, maybe next month for the first public hearing with them, and then hopefully eventual approval, which will start this uh, the ability for people to apply for aquaculture. Grants in town. 
the one issue that our town has unlike a lot of others is that we probably have more uh, demand than supply. So a lot of other towns, you can basically fill up an application and send some in a business plan. And it's fairly simple to get one of these, but we're going to have to be very judicious in how we award grants. So that's one of the big topics of discussion: is how how are the grants going to be awarded? Who who does who's in charge of kind of reviewing the applications? Um, and then we don't have much. There's not much out there. I think it's like. First of all, they don't even know how much can feasibly be farmed at this point. I think total it's 30 acres, and the DMF divides it up to one acre parcel, so total mm -hmm. it'd be 30. Uh, and then there's a there's a maximum uh, amount that each grant holder could have max, maximum acreage. Uh, it's it's pretty interesting, but I think a um, couple of things to know for us is that you're going to have potential new. I mean, it's good for the local economy and also to help create you know bolster the fisheries and also created an element of our fishery community that's going to be like more sustainable going forward in the future. Um, it's also interesting from the economic development perspective and kind of caught it in, in just industry and all that. And I know EDC has actually helped fund a lot of the work so far that they've done. Um, well, apparently 25 years ago there was no oyster industry in Dutch Bar. Right. Uh, yeah, and I don't creep oyster now. You know, they export something like 8 million oysters. Yeah, there's also, I mean, there's a ton of, and that's what I've been, as a liaison, I've been trying to, like, you know, push our agenda a little bit, which is also there's tremendous environmental benefits if this thing actually gets, you know, going, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of shellfishing out there, and then also there's, there's uh, uh, some opportunity to improve recreation, too, because a lot of these, you know, the oysters and clams that are out there are also going to put seed up that's going to help. Uh, improve the wild populations, and then maybe the town could keep a couple acres for maybe a recreational license where people could go and uh, and harvest their own oysters and clams up there. That that is one thing the town is interested in. The board select in particular uh, is how kind of the town might recoup some of the initial upfront costs to get this off the ground because there is some you know there's a lot of clerical stuff that has to go, and then there's going to be you know more hours for the shellfish constable. Stuff like that. So um, we're we're looking at creative ways of how you do that um, because the state doesn't really. You, you can't just charge the users more fees. The state doesn't allow that. It's seen as charging rent on intertidal lands, which is not really allowed under the DMX regs. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's hopefully it's moving forward pretty fast. And once the rules and regs get adopted, there's going to be a pilot program where five aquaculture grant holders will get selected and then they'll be able to start this and see whether there'll be a three-year pilot program where we see whether it's feasible. Because they might not grow up, they might all die, or big nor'easter might come and might blow them all up, but um, it's, it's, uh, the pilot program will be a good opportunity to see how it all works. Um, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of nuance to it, such as how do we deal with our neighbors down in Cohasset. Yeah. Most of the access is from their side. <laughs> Oh, really? oh yeah. Yeah, then that's that, that yeah. Okay. Um, anybody else? Who among us is on the um, public buildings? Who's the ladies on the public buildings? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just <coughs> pull it up right now. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Yeah. I can get. I can get back to you. Right. Yeah. Well, I, unfortunately, I don't have access to it. And CPC met last Monday night, and mile markers are coming in, the canopy is coming in. Um, somebody wanted us, wanted CPC to buy 1.4 acres of swamp, and we said no. Actually, we allowed him to withdraw without prejudice because it's in the Water Resource Protection District, drains into Old Oak and Bucket Pond, but you can't build on it. So, you know, what's why do we want it? And then we went through the different. Um, you protect the water resource. Well, we have other things that we'd like to do than that. And, um, then went through the list of what projects have 
then or are being completed. And finally, the big thing that, that will be coming forward is the Mordecai Lincoln property. And I don't know if any or all of you are familiar with that property. If you go down Country Way and you have to go through the village and um, you pass what used to be Hunter's Pond, which they took the dam down, and now actually they're fishing there, you take a right and as you go up, the, go across the, the little bridge, on the left hand side is the barn that's right on the street, and then behind it is the driveway, and there's a house, and then further on is another house, and it dates back to 16 and change. Um, the original occupant, Mordecai Lincoln, is the great, great, great grandfather of Abraham Lincoln. And the Lincoln Society is not interested in the property. It's approximately five acres of land that is absolutely stunning. Stunning. You can have a river right on the river. It would be great for recreation. It would be great for historical. Any number of different things. And it's $900,000, which is a steal, considering what- It's a fair price. <laughs> it's a fair price. So um, we're in the process of having, somebody's going to put together the application, and it will go, I, we hope, before town meeting in April. So that's what's new with the CDC. EDC does not meet until Monday night. Where does the dog park over there? Well, they had a little flooding issue down there, I think. Um, so, I've, I know really? that I know the consulting engineer has a, a site visit uh, down there tomorrow at 11 after we go to um, Seaside. So. so it's kind of a low spot? It's all draining? No, it's all fixed. It's fixed. They, oh, really? they, I believe they fixed it. Oh, and, okay. uh, but our, I keep driving by it. I'm wondering when they're going to open it. And then, oh, which reminds me, the other issue was the... Um, Roach Field on Beaver Dam mm -hmm. is all but finished. There are a few things that they have to do. And the, the parking lot is, in fact, available. And people are still parking on the street. They are still on the street. And where they should be. Even though there's more than adequate parking. So they wanted signs. They want well, all kinds of things. I said, you know what? You know what works the best? Well, it's one of those big rocks. <laughs> and you put big rocks through there. And right. You get in there. Right? Yeah, don't get in there. So, there's an issue there. And, and on, on CBC, I'm just curious, do you, do you know what's going on with the McDonald property? Across from okay, Baltimore? yes, I do. Has that been acquired yet? Or? It's in the process, and unfortunately, there are a number of heirs. Okay? There's a litany of heirs. And two of them just Die. Oh, so that means that the whole thing has to right. go through the whole thing. It's going to happen, but this stuff is just, you can't make it up. Yeah. You really can't. So, it's sad to hear it did not. Yes, it's very unfortunate that they passed. However, um, there you go. Who's going to vote? Okay, I second it. What about Karen? Yeah. I'll just give you the brief summary. I'm going to Seaside tomorrow to uh, just kind of check out where they are because they'll be coming into your next meeting asking for a surety reduction. They've cut some of the trees for phase two, but now the trees have been sitting there because they don't have the, they're not all cut and they haven't been able to get into phase two. Surprise, surprise. Um, you have your public hearing. <laughs> you have your public hearing on 926 for the zoning bylaw changes. There'll be three zoning bylaw changes. Uh, our friends at Carter's Estates filed a change to their septic plan with the Board of Health. They said they'll come to us afterwards. Oh. What, what did they change? I don't know. <laughs> what? I, I haven't seen it. I've asked them to, when they review it, to let me know. I, I think they're trying to go for a smaller system. Well, what was it they just said? 926? That's the zoning public hearing? It is a planning board meeting. It's right? a planning board oh, meeting. Okay. 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 It's not a separate. It's not a separate no. uh, we have numerous um, applications for accessory dwelling units and um, administrative stormwater permits coming in, so we remain 
swapped. And that's it. That's it. I'll second those motions. Anybody? Sure. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.